to begin, folks. So if everyone would please um, take a seat and uh, we will begin the uh, meeting. First, uh, please read the opening statement, Eileen. Thank you. Thank you. Zoning Board of Adjustment Meeting, Monday, January 8, 2018, Reorganization Meeting and Regular Meeting. I hereby declare this meeting of the Howell Township Zoning Board to be open. Adequate notice haven't been given pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act in the following manner. First, on December 11, 2017, a copy of said notice was mailed to the Star Ledger and the Tritown News. Second, on December 11, 2017, a copy of said notice was hand-delivered to the clerk of the Township of Howell. Third, on December 11, 2017, said notice was posted in the office of the Zoning Board and on the bulletin board in the Howell Township Municipal Building, 4567 Route 9, Howell Township, New Jersey. In accordance with the Fire Prevention Code and your safety, Please be advised that this facility is designed with two emergency exits which are on your right at the front and rear of the meeting room. Furthermore, smoking is not permitted in the municipal building. Please take note that this meeting is being videotaped for possible future broadcast on Howell Township TV 77. Okay, <coughs> thank you. Um, again, for the record, Ronald J. Tropoli acting as the uh, interim uh, chair to move the meeting. I would ask Mr. James Moretti and uh, Mr. Jose Orozco to please join me in the well for the administration of the oath. Good luck. Thank you. And then they just need to sign. Right. Thank you. Right. Gentlemen, if you would. Gentlemen, please raise your right hand. I state your names. James Anthony Moretti, Jr. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. And I would bear true faith and allegiance to the same. To the same. And to the government. <coughs> to the government established in the United States. Established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the Solemnly swear, I do further solemnly swear that I will impartially, well, impartially and justly, and justly perform all the duties, perform all the duties of the office of the, the office of, of the zoning board, board judgment, according to the best of your ability, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. I'm going to ask you now, both, and congratulations to both, uh, Mr. James Moretti, if you would. Record, Mr. Moretti is alternate two, having a two year term. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks, Tom. Do we hand that over to Jose? And uh, Jose Orozco, you have the unexpired term ending on 12 31 18, and if you would sign right there. Thank you. Please take your places. Congratulations. Thank you. <coughs> Again, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you would, if you would, would take a roll call. Yes, I will. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Congratulations, Jose. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. Welcome aboard. Mr. Amada? Here. Mr. Mertens? Here. Mr. O'Donnell? Here. Mr. Posh? Here. Mr. San Clemente? Here. I believe Mr. Turk is going to be late, probably with the weather, so we'll just give him a little time. Uh, Mr. Orozco? Here. Mr. Moretti? Here. And Chairman Nansen? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. Everyone, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. 
At this point of the uh, reorganization, the first item on the agenda is nominations for chairman. Uh, I will call for nominations at this time. I nominate uh, Wendell Manson. Would there be a second on that I'll, nomination? I'll second it. Are there any other nominations for chair? Seeing none, may we have a vote? Yes, you may. Mr. Amata? Yes. Mr. Mertens? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Posh? Yes. Mr. San Clemente? Yes. Uh, Mr. Orozco? Yes. And Chairman Nansen? Yes. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Chair. I'll turn the meeting over to you at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tropoli. Thank you, board members. Congratulations. I Good will job. do my yeah. best to serve you guys the best way I can. If y'all need anything, you got my telephone number. <laughs> you do a great job. Use coffee? Okay, first request was coffee. So, <laughs> okay, do we have a nomination for vice chair? Michael San Clemente. M nomination Michael San Clemente. Any other further nominations? I'll second that. But. Okay, seconded by Mr. Amata. Can we have a roll call, please? Yes, you may. Mr. Amata? Yes. Mr. Mertens? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Posh? Yes. Mr. San Clemente? Yes. Mr. Orozco? Yes. And Chairman Nansen? Yes. Motion carries. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, nomination for secretary. Do we have one? I'd like to nominate Mr. Tom Posh. I'll second that. Any further nominations? Seeing none, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Amada? Yes. Mr. Mertens? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Posh? Yes. Mr. San Clemente? Yes. Mr. Orozco? Yes. And Chairman Nansen? Thought you were going to vote no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, consulting attorney for the zoning board? Ron Tropoli. Motion? Motion. Okay. Motion. I'll second it. Any other nominations? Yeah. Having none? Can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Amada? Yes. Mr. Mertens? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Posh? An enthusiastic yes. Thank you. Mr. San Clemente? Yes. Mr. Orozco? Yes. And Chairman Nansen? Yes. Very much. Thank you, Ron, for everything you have done for this board. We've been together a long time. Motion I'm carries. not even going to say how, how long, but you've been here a lot longer than I well. have. But. Welcome back, sir. Thank you, Chairman and members of the board. I appreciate the faith you have in me, and I'll do my best again this year, which is, I think, my 19th year, to serve your interests well. Thank you. Yes, sir. Consulting engineer. I'd like to uh, nominate Jack Ballin, t and Associates. I'll second it. Any other nominees? I didn't think so. <laughs> can we can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Amada? Yes. Mr. Mertens? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Posh? Yes. Mr. San Clemente? Yes. Mr. Orozco? Yes. And Chairman Nansen? Yes. Welcome back, Karen. Jack. Thank you very much. I'm not even going into the years here. <laughs> but, you know, it, you're a wealth of knowledge for this board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Consulting planner, do we have a nomination? <clears throat> I'd like to nominate Jennifer Bean. I'll second it. And what's the company reference? Avakian. Avakian. Okay. Um, any other nomination? Seeing none, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Amada? Yes. Mr. Mertens? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Posh? Yes. Mr. San Clemente? Yes. Mr. Orozco? Yes. And Chairman Nansen? Yes, and I, I just want to say one thing. Jennifer, welcome back, for starters. And nothing to take away from Mika. Mika filled your shoes as, as good as anybody could, but it just was not you. But welcome back. I appreciate that. I'm happy to be back. Yes. Glad to have you back. Yep. Certified tree expert. I'd like to nominate Sherry Spiro from CME Associates. I'll second it. Nomination second. Do we have any other nominations? Seeing none. Can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Amada? Yes. Mr. Mertens? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Posh? Yes. Mr. San Clemente? Yes. 
Mr. Orozco? Yes. And Chairman Nansen? Yes. Motion Welcome Paris. back, Sherry. It's a pleasure having you on the board. You do know your stuff, and we appreciate that very much. Amen. Administrative officer, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> do I have a nomination? <laughs> I'll second it. I'm not even asking for any other nominations there. Can Thank we you. have a roll call? Mr. Amada? Yes. Mr. Mertens? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Posh? Yes. Mr. San Clemente? Yes. Mr. Orozco? Yes. And Chairman Nansen? Yes. And Eileen, I want to thank you. You know, when Barbara left many years ago, they, we felt that the shoes were going to be very hard to fill. And I tell you what, you've done it. Thank you. It's, I appreciate yes. it. All the way a very extraordinary job. Thank you. Feeling them. So thank you. Recording secretary, that's another no-brainer. That's not Tom? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, I we got a motion for Eileen and seconded by Mr. Armada. Can we have a roll call? Mr. Armada? Yes. Mr. Mertens? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Posh? Yes. Mr. San Clemente? Yes. Mr. Orozco yes. and Chairman Nansen. Yes. Thank you. Welcome aboard and thank you for all the hard work you do do. Thank you. I hope to have some minutes ready for you at the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, 2018 meeting date. The resolution for the meeting dates. And I left a copy for everybody to take with them so they know what dates we have meetings. And also a, a drafted roster, correct? Yes, I'd like everybody to please look at that roster and notify me if there's any corrections or additions, especially cell phones. Okay. When we have to cancel a meeting, it's sometimes easier to get a hold of everybody that way. Thank okay. you. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the meeting dates as proposed. Thank you, Mr. Merton. Do I'll I second second? it. Seconded by Mr. Armada. Can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Armada? Yes. Mr. Mertens? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Posh? Yes. Mr. San Clemente? Yes. Mr. Orozco? Yes. And Chairman Nansen? Yes. Resolutions memorialized. Thank you. Official newspaper. Now, we've got to be careful with this because it, it's, it's a daily newspaper that has to be correct. Last year we had a daily and a weekly. The weekly is fine except it, it winds up creating an extra deadline for people because sometimes the 10 days has to be done three weeks ahead of time to get it in the paper on time. Okay. But we have had some uh, attorneys ask if we could go back to the Asbury Park Press because we've been having numerous issues with the Star Ledger trying to get the affidavits on time. And a lot of times I have to go on the public website to make sure that the notices have been done on time. They're also twice as expensive, the Star Ledger, as the Asbury Park Press. Okay. So, but it's the board's choice. Keeping that in mind, do I have a uh, motion? I'll make a motion to uh, use the Asbury Park Press. I'll second it. Is Can we there, have a second newspaper? Is there a secondary? It's a Tritown, isn't it? Yeah, it can be whatever you want. Okay, so I'll make a motion for the Tritown News as the second paper. Okay. I'll motion second for it. Asbury. Okay, got a second. Motion by Mr. Armada, uh, by Mr. O'Donnell, seconded by Mr. Armada. Can we have a roll call, on that, please? Mr. Armada? Yes. Mr. Mertens? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Posh? Yes. Mr. San Clemente? Yes. Mr. Orozco? Yes. And Chairman Nansen? Yes. Thank you. Okay, site review. Uh, Mr. O'Donnell, would you be interested in chairing that? Yes. Uh, do I have any other volunteers that want to go on the site review? Mr. Merton? If you need somebody. I'll... Yeah, we, we are. Okay. Mr. Merton, Mr. O'Donnell, Mr. Merton, and one other. How about Mr. Turk? I. <laughs> I should have made him the secretary. <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Turk. Um, now, I let me explain uh, to the new members. You're you're all welcome to go to the site to 
to review a site to look at the site. You can do that individually, which is no, not an issue. What the site review is, if, if the board requests the site review, they, these three members will go and do a site review and report back to the board. Any of the board members are allowed to go look at the site. But there can't be more than three board members meeting at the site, you know, it, it, at one time. Cannot do that. It, it's, am I correct, Mr. Tropoli? That's right. There has to be a quorum. Yeah, it, you can't have a quorum meet at the site unless it's advertised and right. properly done. Then the whole board can go, you know. But just letting you know that you can go look at the sites or drive by, you know, kind of see what's going on get your bearings so but mr. O'Donnell will head the site review okay the rules committee will be myself mr. San Clemente and mr. Posh okay. and that does the reorg until mr. Turk gets in we'll swear him in at that time but we'll move forward with the agenda Approval of minutes. I have no minutes for you to approve. Vouchers? I do have two vouchers from Mr. Tropoli that need to be reviewed and approved. We can pass them out for now. Okay. We'll vote on them at the end of the meeting. Correspondence? I have no correspondence, just what was mailed to the members. Okay. Mr. Tropley, you mind swearing in the professionals? And by the way, welcome back, Matt. Nice to have you yeah. back. Well, you did a great job for us last year. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. Okay. Appl applicate, uh, Mr. Mr. Trump, right, right, Mr. Chair, I, there are no uh, resolutions pending, which brings us now to the applications before the board. And I will be stepping from the uh, from the dais, and I'll ask Mr. Cachero to come up and uh, chair that particular part of the meeting. Ron. Uh, before you. you leave, right after this application mm -hmm. is completed, I would like the board to go into a brief executive session with Ron, with Ron and you. and you also. You're you're the board attorney. Sure. Can I come also? I don't think so, Mister. Very quick. Son of Blick. Are you bringing the coffee? Let me ask that first. Send Matt Howard out for it. Oh, okay, you're going to send Matt. Matt, I don't think Matt wants to do that. <laughs> Not in this weather. Who's sitting next to you, Jack? Who's that? Well, you're going to be out, out there a little bit here. Yeah, you seem to come in. Kind of hard. Okay. Okay. Case number BA 086SD 2, AAM Mills, Preliminary and Final Major Technical Subdivision. Application of AAM Mills, LLC, CO, Sun Equity Partners as applicant in AA Cardiff LLC, AA Martell Howell LLC, AA Towers LLC, Howe Partners LLC, ZS Investors, NJ LLC, ZS Mill LLC, Mill Club LLC is owners seeking preliminary in final major subdivision, technical subdivision for financing purposes. Approve to create a separate partial partials for buildings G, buildings E, and the Texas Roadhouse restaurant with parking lots in front of the building and 
portion of delivery vehicles access all behind the buildings. The remainder of the site designated as lot 5406 will be retained by AAM Mills LLC <coughs> and will contain 35.45 acres. The subdivision will not reduce the limit or otherwise modify access to any parking areas or to the existing and proposed buildings on premises known as Block 25, Lots 5402, 5405, 70, and 71, U.S. Route 9, North in Lanes Mill Road. Expiration date, April 2nd, 2018. Mr. Sonoplin. Thank you. Uh, for those new members, welcome to the Howell Township Zoning Board of Adjustment. My name is Jerry Sonnenblick, Sonnenblick Parker & Silvers. I represent Greenleaf Shopping Center, which originally was Tropicana, which has gone through it about 10 years now. It'll be 10 years. I think 2008 was when I started on this thing, and I wasn't the first person involved in this. So basically, what you are here tonight to see is something that is done in many shopping centers. And in fact, in 2015, we came before this board and we requested a technical subdivision wherein we place different buildings in different lots for finance purposes and the board granted us approval at that time it is one shopping center uh, all of the all of the buildings the LA fitness the uh, uh, the movies the BJ's and the like all of them have access through cross access easements which are reviewed by your engineer and by your attorney uh, at the end of the day so that it is still operating as one center owned by one group and while the chairman, uh, by the way, happy and healthy new year to everybody, the, the chairman indicated we have all of these various slots, but it's basically, you wouldn't know if you walked on the site that there's any change. This is not an application where one inch of structure is changing. It is simply a request for a subdivision technical so that different lots can have a, a separate ownership, if you will, for financing purposes and the like. Uh, that's done quite frequently. In fact, uh, I always used to utilize when I came before any board, you, uh, Macy's at the Freehold um, in the mall, the Raceway Mall, which is attached, has its own lot. I'll give you an example. This is done throughout the throughout New Jersey. I assume it's done throughout the country for those purposes. So uh, today we're just going to have uh, our surveyor speak uh, initially to what the Lots are going to look like. We have submitted our plans. Uh, we uh, have our planner and engineer, uh, Joe Lalka, who will speak to the issues because we need any number of variances, but they're technical variances because once you start just putting lots around different locations, you start having problems. They're not problems, but you don't meet the setbacks. You don't meet any number of technical requests, but the shopping center as a whole does. So there's no change in zoning, there's no change in drainage, there's no change in access, no changes whatsoever, and your engineer and planner, in fact, Jennifer Beam was here back in 2015, and here she is again. So, uh, but we do have a report from your planner and from your engineer, and we'll respond to that, and the answer that we'll tell you in advance is we read everything they say. So it, it's not that, that heavy lifting. So without further ado, I would call our first witness, which would be uh, uh, Kevin Murphy from DWS. Kevin? Okay. Mr. S Mr. Sonoblick, b before you move forward, Jose, you will be a voting member. You're, you're our seventh vote, so you will be voting okay. on, on this case. And just to remind the new members, you can ask questions, you, regardless if you vote or not. You can participate. That doesn't keep you from asking questions. So, right. you know. I, I, will, I, all right, I will have our professionals speak to it. I just tried to give you an overview of what's happening. Uh, so at this point, Kevin, uh, oh, by the way, service accepted? Uh, are we okay with service? Yes. Okay, thank you. Kevin, you, you have to be sworn in. You swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state and spell your name for the record. Uh, my name is Kevin Murphy. I'm a professional engineer and professional land surveyor. Uh, K-E-V-I-N-M-U-R-P-H-Y. I'll be uh, speaking to the land surveying issues regarding the plan this evening. Mr. Sonneblik, can you qualify 
Kevin, I will, please. I will, I will ask uh, Mr. Mr. Murphy, if you would, I guess this is on, uh, if you would, would you just state for the board your educational background and your professional relationships? Uh, yes, I've been a licensed professional land surveyor for over 20 years. Um, my formal education is uh, I'm a graduate of Rutgers College of Engineering, and I've been licensed professional engineer for, I guess, 18 of those 20 years. So I'm a dual licensed person. Uh, like I said, in this case, I'll just be speaking to the land surveying issues. I was involved with the uh, subdivision plan and preparation of the subdivision plan. What we have before you and what's up on the, the screens around the, uh, the uh, office here is a... Uh, Oh, just before you get to that, we've pre-marked some exhibits. I do not yes. think this one has been pre-marked, so we would be up to A6. But let's so. finish qualifying real quick. Okay. Is that the extent of your qualifications? Have you ever I, testified before yes. any courts? Or? Yeah, I, I've given testimony uh, regarding engineering and surveying issues for, I guess, the past 10 years. Okay. We accept your qualifications. Have you ever appeared before this board? No, I don't believe I've no. been before. Well, that's, before. A, that's a positive. Okay. <laughs> uh, Can we get the hand mic, please? Did we hand out these smaller sheets that we have? Did you no, bring, we have them? No. No, Joe got stuck locked out of his office. That's what we're going to use that. Okay. Right. We have to mark it first. Yes. <laughs> okay. Can everybody hear me? It's on. It is. You, you have to hold it close, though. Okay. Kevin, if you just just. Uh, uh, Describe what that exhibit is, uh, well, A6. Right. Uh, this exhibit basically is the existing lot um, or series of lots. And what we've tried to do is color code the plan so that you can clearly identify what we're proposing as far as the subdivision itself goes. Sure. Is there any other sheets that we need to bring nope. into evidence? Uh, I don't believe we have any other exhibits, do we, Jerry? Well, you have, the, you, have the, uh, you have the other sheet as well, but I it's think the this... Hmm? Side, Kevin. We can bring that in as well. Right. Come back. Shouldn't have come Which would be A7. A7. And what, what is A7? <laughs> <laughs> Working off the, the holiday treats. <laughs> Describe A7, Kevin, please. This is the existing BJ's lot? Seven. Yes, sir. And A6 is on the other side. Okay. I think you got it now. Kevin, go 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 through. We we right now. How many lots do we have? Um, I believe it's six lots right now, Jerry. Well, we don't. Have, we have. We're going. We're going to. Well, what? I believe the uh, our notice indicates that we have. Uh, I'm looking for the report. I'm sorry. I think we were going from four lots to seven to uh, seven lots, if I remember correctly. And so right now there are there are four lots, and they are, by the way, they are lots that have been technically subdivided. So we're now having developed the site for more uses. We're coming in for what would be, in my opinion, anyway, uh, the last uh, uh, technical subdivision, which now is going to go into seven lots, but if you would, uh, Mr. Would you Mr. Sonnenblick, just I'm just looking at the CME report, and they, it looks like it's going from four lots to five lots from what I read in the CME report. No, it's, it's more than that. Fifty-four point oh six, oh seven, oh eight, oh nine, and ten. BJ is separate already, so that would be another lot. It's either six, six or seven, Ron. It's it, but I'm just looking at the report. I understand what you're doing. Hmm? It, it's, it's. Well, B, BJ's is not listed on that. No, BJ's, well, BJ's was an original lot. That was the no, I know, but, but it's still considered a lot. Yes, it, that's why it's part of this development, which is why I added to the number that I gave you, even though we're not asking for that to be revised. That lot still exists as it does now. Five, 
that's correct. Yeah. I agree. That yeah. is correct. And, correct. And we still have PJs, so. Uh, the, if you would, just, and if you can, just tell us what we have new, each of the lots has its own requirement variances which were listed. Uh, for example, uh, most of the lots do not provide for the minimum of 80,000, this is for the new members as well, for the 80,000 minimum square foot required for a lot. However, we are far excessive 80,000 because we're now technically making some of the lots 42,000 feet, uh, 69,000 feet, 59,000 feet, and at the same time, for those members who have not been here, in each case, the percentage of impervious surface, that surface that the drainage is required for, is going to exceed that which is permitted on a lot that requires an 80,000 square foot minimum. But the drainage is taken care of for the whole 40 odd acres, and that's already been approved, and nothing's going to change. So okay. all of the drainage, all of the drainage, all of the traffic, all of the access, lighting, you name it, is, is staying the same. Mr. Well, Sotom, look, you, you know, can I just ask one question sure. and maybe help orient all of us? So just from a historical standpoint, what happened here was, you know, like you said, several years ago, there was a use variance and plurium final site plan. In 2015. That, that was correct. granted for, in total, all of these lots. That is correct. And the development was for the movie theater, the BJ's, a restaurant, and some other uses on the site, right? Well, actually, it was Mr. Tro Mr. Kachera wasn't here, Mr. Tropoli was. So initially, we had a BJ's approval, and we had an approval for a significant number of other buildings that were not yet tenanted. We didn't know the names of them, mm -hmm. and we had a piece of land, which maybe you'll learn about, which is the German Club, which then was integrated into this site, and that's where LA Fitness is right. and the like. So right. there so was a merger, so and all sorts of things happened. Mr. Sonnenblick, my point is that with all of these approvals, um, while you may see that there are subdivisions and, and other divisions that exist that are being proposed, the lot as it was, or these lots as they were proposed to the board, essentially operated as one integrated shopping center. That is correct. And to the extent that there were subdivisions, there weren't really physical manifestations of the subdivisions. There was no obvious separation of the lots. And because this was integrated, there was shared parking. And um, you know our requirements for the zone were, were basically, we were looking at it in total with all of these lots, rather than going lot by lot. So I think, you know, unlike more traditional subdivisions, these were more in the way of invisible lines uh, that you couldn't really see, and the board had taken or, or had viewed it more as, as one lot because it was integrated when looking at the requirements. So what Mr. Sonnenblick is telling you is that when you do these invisible <coughs> lines, which are essentially so you could sell individual lots, get financing for individual lots, you don't see those lines. When you're when you're there, there's really there's no like fencing or shrubbery or anything, and the people who are moving using the movie theater may be parking at one of the restaurants. Likewise, they rely on the amenities and the parking spaces from other lots. It operates as a single lot. You know, it's not although individual lots are being sold, it is still being used as one integrated shopping center. And in fact, it's not even necessarily that they're being sold, but they're being financed separately. Uh, because financing obviously is a factor in terms mm -hmm. of developing a site so that a, a lending institution can say, yes, you can have a X number of dollars for this particular technical lot which has a particular use on the site. Right. And so at this point in time... So if, if I could just ask this question please. as well. So by virtue of modifying these lines, again, these what I would call invisible lines, we are not adding or deleting any parking spaces, right? No. Nope. We are not increasing any impervious nope. coverage. Uh, we're not taking down any trees. You're asking the questions that I would, yes, our engineer yeah. would speak to all so of So basically, yeah. the site as I drive past it today is the same as it's going to look if you guys get an approval and I drive past it in a few weeks. Exactly. It won't change, and in fact, uh, uh, basically, uh, because it, it started for those people who haven't been here for nine years, eight years, 
uh, we actually got the approval for 289,000 square feet back in November 9th, 2009. And that was when it was called Tropicana. Uh, and then all of this has occurred subsequently where we got BJ's Wholesale Club and at that time. So in effect, we are, and it is all going to be maintained. And if you'll notice, the applicant is AAM Mill LLC. If you take a look at that, that, that is the entity that represents all of the various owners that the chairman read off as to the owners of the property, which are tenants in common. And they're all of one group from Sun Equity, and they're the ones who have posted the bonds and worked with the township in all these years. And the, just so you have Mr. Menino, Mr. Menino is here. He is the project manager. And if you have any questions, I didn't anticipate him testifying, but he's here to answer any questions you may have. But the maintenance of this entire center is being taken care of by the ownership. Mr. Sonoblick, are do you have an engineer that could testify to everything you're testifying to? Yes, and I, I, okay. I will be sworn in afterwards, so okay. thank you. That, that was a, a little sudden. Anyway, okay. could you just explain the various lots yes. that are there to the board? At Mr. Menino, our client's request, we created these lines to uh, divide the property um, into, I'll say, parcels that meet uh, the project's requirements. And um, each one of the parcels has been identified on this, this plan in color. Uh, the areas are uh, uh, noted as such. Um, I believe we submitted this plan, or not the color version of this plan, but basically the black and white version. Uh, it's been reviewed, and there were a couple of uh, relatively minor comments that we've agreed to comply with. Uh, with regards to revision to the plans, I think you probably all have that review letter. Or, uh, so I, I mean, what you're saying is basically prepared. any any of the recommendations and the reports of the board's professionals, the applicant will comply with. That's correct. Okay. That is both the planning report and the engineering report, mm -hmm. Mr. Malvin's report and the CME report by Ms. Apti. Okay. So, in effect, as you stated, nothing is changing except the lot lines. Correct. The, the lot lines are being uh, adjusted, for lack of a better term, and placed um, per our client's direction and request. All right, for new members of the board, and then we can move along. Uh, we have the, the, the orange, the lot in the lower right corner is what facility? That's the BJ's. All right. That has really nothing to do with our application. That it's is just correct. The original, that is the original uh, use for the property. All right. And indicate the upper blue. Uh, I believe this is the LA Fitness. Right. Um, this purple, I believe, is the Texas Roadhouse. Right, which is under construction now. Right, so there's uh, an existing uh, strip mall here. Mm -hmm. And I believe this, this green lot uh, is a proposed uh, e pad. E building pad. E the e building pad. Without a tenant at this time. Correct. That's my understanding of it. All right, so if anybody has any questions, we'll respond to it. Is there anything else that you need to think you have to say, Mr. Murphy? Please no, I don't believe so. I'll Thank you. Well, just, just before, before we, I mean, there are variances. Well, I'm going to have I, a planner and engineer okay. coming up now. Oh, that's fine. Okay. I was in asking Mr. Okay. Murphy those questions. That's fine. Uh, Mr. Mallon, do you have any questions? No. Jennifer? The only thing uh, that I would just request, because the plans are yours, right? They're not Joe's plans? That's correct. So we just had a couple of plan revisions that we would like to see implemented. If that, if any of those are a problem, that would be great. Uh, the ones mentioned in the review letter? Yeah. We have, we no, have no problem. problem. We have okay. no problem with anything that is in the, C, in the CME letter that you have taken over. Correct. And we're good with that. And, and the T&M letter. And the T&M letter. We're a little concerned about the, the uh, shade trees that uh, Sherry yeah. is talking about, but we'll discuss that. <laughs> She was my next one on the list. Sherry, <laughs> do you have any comments? Okay. Board members, do you all have any questions of this applicant or this witness? Yeah, I have one question. If somebody comes along and buys one of those lots, and then does he have the parking that's necessary with that lot without using anybody else's? Every lot is subject to the overall master plan of this, call, think of it as a master plan for the entire center, and a developer's agreement that we have with the township, and the bonding and all the like. Right. So everybody who would ever to come in, if we were to sell a lot, they would be subject to everything that has already gone in the past. And so everybody has the ability to utilize the center as any shopping center would be utilized, 
each one has its own intended parking because it's close. LA Fitness right. has its parking in front of it. We testified to that. BJ's has parking. The movies has parking. But people can park wherever they want to at the end of the day. No, that's true. But if I bought a lot over there and I have to be guaranteed that I have sufficient parking to yes. cover my requirements yes. as a lot, yes. not, not using anybody else's, because let's assume I buy that and they said, you can't use the additional parking that you have around here except your own. Nobody will no. know who's using what well, parking. Mr. Sonnenblick, isn't there no, a... The answer is yes, there's an yes. agreement. Every right. tenant will have an agreement with the owner, if this were to occur, that there's sufficient parking for them in their location. Well, I think also it's important to understand the prior approvals. Right. So the prior approvals were granted based upon there being shared parking. So no one of the other owners has the right to say you can't use my parking because all of the approvals are based upon there being shared parking. Correct. So all of them will have access to the parking, you know, on, on the okay, other lots. That's a priori. Right, they, they, all, they all have access to Lanesville's Road. They all have access to Route 9. Okay. That's uh, Mr. Sonneblick, can you bring up your property manager real quick? Sure. I, I Mr. Menino, would you be sworn in, please? Sw swear him in. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state and spell your name for the record. Charles Menino, M-A-N-N-I-N-O. Okay. You are the property manager and have been involved in the development of this site for many years. Is that correct? Yes. Any I don't, he doesn't have to qualify, I don't think. No, I, I don't. I, I just have a couple of questions sure. that might help Mr. Absolutely. Amata understand. It, being the property manager, you're in charge of snow plowing, correct? Yes, our firm um, handles, our, our company uh, contracts for our, our snow plowing. Correct? Now, is that just individual lots or is that for the whole property? The entire property. Okay. That would, if, if, if one of these lots were to be sold to an individual, you would still be responsible for their plowing, correct? Yes, we would have, we would have internal agreements with the, uh, with the different properties. Um, to make sure that are those uh, pen existing now or are you yes. going to negotiate those no they're no. existing now yeah they're, they, they're, that's they're, why i'm having him testify yeah. every the development the maintenance of the site is 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 already ingrained within the developer's agreement with the township of Howell. is that correct yes there's maintenance agreements there's uh, reciprocal easement agreements where um you know cross access agreements for for Parking for whatever needs to be managed for the site to, as it's been stated, to to consider this one site. So whether a piece is subdivided, it still remains part of that one. So site. if I bought one of those lots as an individual, you're going to give me snow plowing as part of my fact that I exist. That's part without of the maintenance. Yes. Giving you yes. any money, right? Well, I'm not saying without any. I, I don't know what the financial. Um, ag agreements might be between okay. the tenants, tenant, the property owners uh, that make up the entire site. So you know, I'm not going to say there's not going to be any monetary agreements. No, normally you have a maintenance agreement right. and yes, that's paid the, that way. Right. Okay. It's like a condominium complex. You know, you got a right. retirement exactly condominium. Right. It's like a condominium. Everybody pitches in to pay for the snow plowing, to pay for the grounds maintenance, to pay for you know, maintenance of the no. parking and all of that. That, that That's what they take care of. And that, that's an agreement with each individual tenant that's there. You know, they, is that correct? Yeah. When, when, uh, when we set up these properties for overall maintenance, we make, try to make sure that everything is inclusive for the entire site, whether it's a segregated parcel or not. It would, you're, you're thinking just, I think, a way to put it is this. If they were all different tenants, they all have their requirements for parking, they would be paying a rent. Right. If, if, in fact, we have a separate ownership, sure. they're going to be as if they're a, just like a tenant because they have to have access. Nobody could cut them off and say they can't get out to Route 9 or they can't get out to Lane's Hills <coughs> Road. It's, it's no difference. But basically, it's, a, it's more of a financial aspect than it is anything to do with the operation of the shopping center itself. So if light bulbs go out on my P 
piece of property, you're going to come over and make no. Well, I, 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 you, you use the fact that you personally were going to buy it, so I have some problems with that, Mr. Uh, Armada. But uh, effectively, yes, we, we ha they have to maintain their site. Right. We maintain the entire site, and just like any tenancy would do. So that goes for making lines and numbering lots, uh, parking spaces, or whatever. everything that's on a site plan is okay. the responsibility of. AAN Mills LLC, let's put it that way. That's really what's yes. happening. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions from the board? Seeing none, Mr. Sonneblick. Thank you. Mr. Lalke. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state and spell your name and give us your, uh, your address. My name is Joseph S. Lalka, spelled L-A-L-K-A, with D.W. Smith Associates okay. Engineering. You, you, I know you've testified here previously, but just for the record, would you just state your educational background and that you've testified previously? Sure. I graduated with a uh, Bachelor of Science from Rutgers University in 1972, went on to get a master's degree in water uh, resource engineering uh, in the... Oh, it was about 1976, I achieved my uh, engineering license and in 78 my planner's license. I've kept them both active and have utilized them over the years. I've testified before this board um, and your planning board and any number of neighboring boards throughout the state and the courts of New Jersey have been accepted as an expert witness. And you'll be testifying as engineer and planner? Yes. Okay. We accept your qualifications. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. Lalka, there's, there's obviously not much engineering here, but as a planner, uh, could you testify as to what is being proposed and discuss the, ease, the, the variances and or waivers that we're requiring because of the technical subdivision? Yeah, and the salient point here is that there is no engineering because, after all, this technical subdivision does not affect the physical workings functioning or the physical plant whatsoever. It's simply the development of a series of, of lines, uh, apparitional lines as they were. The only place they exist really is in town hall and in the deeds and cross easement agreements. Uh, so functionally there's, there's no change to this operating shopping center the way it was originally approved by, by this board. You've had an opportunity to review uh, the letter of uh, Jack Mallon which uh, I think was dated December 4th, 2017, his review letter? Yes, and uh, uh, we take no, uh, no exception to any of the engineering comments that, uh, that Jack makes or his recommendations will accomplish them all. And there is a letter from D.W. Smith to the municipality dated today uh, referring to those specific items that uh, Mr. Mallon mentioned in his report indicating that we will comply with all of them. I don't, I don't think we have that, Mr. Son of Lick, so let's just mark that as an exhibit. All right, I think, well, I think you have it, don't you? I, it was sent to you today, because so I asked them to. Was that with the two maps? No, uh, the, there the were maps. two maps, there were also the, two letters sent late in the day. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's just mark right, it. Here. This is the compliance letter dated today, signed by uh, Kevin Murphy, actually. All right, so we're going to mark as A8 a letter dated January 8, 2018 to Eileen Rubano uh, from Kevin Murphy, uh, which looks to be responsive to Mr. Mallon's engineering letter. Can, Mr. Kachera, could you let Mr. Mallon see that whenever you get it marked? Yeah, in? I'm just going to identify it, mark it in. We also have a letter uh, responding to the uh, CME report. Ms. Can we just address Mr. Mallon first, and oh, then sure. we'll go to CME? Mr. Mallon, do you have any further input or questions? No, they've, they've complied with all the technical requirements that I asked to. 
Okay. The flat details. That's fine. Is there any questions from the board as far as the engineering? Seeing it. Mr. Sonneblick. Thank you. We then have a response that I guess would be a e nine. nine, a nine, which would be a response from DWS with regard to the uh, technical report of the planner. You have that, Mr. Alka? No, no, I do okay, not. Okay, we have that. I had it here a second ago. And likewise, uh, that addresses the technical comments that came from CME and your planner. Uh, and we completely concur with uh, with accomplishing all of the items that they're suggesting. And they they're quite there was some redundancy between Jacks and and uh, the CME letter, and we'll comply with both. Okay. Jennifer. On on the planning. Well, are, are you going to put the I'll, testimony I'll, on the record for the? I, I'm talking about the review. Of the, an, the answer is Wait, that you have haven't seen it yet. He hasn't given it to us. I don't. Yeah. All right. Okay. You, the, have the, you have reviewed the report. The planner's well, review letter was broken into basically two portions. Six dealt with technical items, which are very similar to Jackson. We concur. Five deals with the planning issues, which I'll be ad addressing okay. shortly. We have the. We ha I have the letter. Uh, okay. A letter again dated January 8, 2018, referred to the CME report, it's signed again by Kevin Murphy. This is the report. You're getting your exercise tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you should have taken the other secretary job. <laughs> mm -hmm. so six. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to resign before long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm charging you rent, you know, on the pen. <laughs> Out of character. Okay. Do you want to? I'm ready to go. Okay. Mr. Sonneblick? I have no, I have no further questions unless you want Mr. Lalka to go through each and every lot as to the variances that we've requested, well, which are all technical in nature. Right, in he event. needs to address right, them in some manner. Planning, all right, so uh, would you, Mr. Lauk, if you would. I'll, I'll make this brief. Uh, the uh, CMA letter, uh, item three, uh, and Jack's letter as well depict the variances lot by lot. Uh, this is like taking a, a berry pie and slicing it into different sized pieces. Can you, you talk a little louder, please, Ms. Walker? It's like slicing up a berry pie into different sized pieces, and some get more of one thing and some get less of another. At the end of the day, it still operates as the whole berry pie. So what we're doing is dividing the pie into uh, the one big lot, which is 06. Uh, it's a zero lot line along the, the BJs. It contains the, uh, the theater. It contains three uh, retail, future retail strips where they... The pads have already been prepped. Uh, the buildings are in, uh, coming under construction as the tenancy is developed. So that's that's the big piece of the pie. Contains the bulk of the shopping center. It's uh, it's only uh, it's large enough to meet the minimum size requirements. The only variance associated with that is the Z zero line. And what we've done is we've cut between the BJs and the uh, future retail we cut a line right down the property line, as you would in a, in a condominium, for instance. Uh, lot 06, which is shown in, I'm sorry, that is 06. Lot 07, shown in green, it's a future pad. The pad's been prepped. It's small. Uh, it, so it's got uh, variances that have to do with frontage with area and with the rear yard because the distance between the building as shown here and the back of the lot line is smaller than the required 25 feet. It's 11.5 feet more or less and that's the green lot. The yellow lot which is lot 08, it's also small. So it's variant in terms of area and in terms of uh, one of the one of the sides. It contains, it's, it's actually zero because it's connected to the Texas Roadhouse and we're partitioning down that common wall. 
to separate the roadhouse from the retail. That's an existing retail building that's about 50% leased at this time. The Texas Roadhouse, which I was here to testify for specifically, is the purple lot. That's lot. Joe, only. before you go on to the purple lot, the yellow lot also needs a variance for coverage. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the case for all of the small lots. They have uh, excess impervious coverage, but again, the, the total is the same that had been approved by this board as a, as a gross entity. Uh, yeah, these are uh, more intense in terms of impervious coverage, but all of these entities go to the same drainage and detention basin system where the water <coughs> is controlled. So you get more from one, less from the other. It all washes out, if I may say. Mr. Lauka, each of each of these uh, variances were noted in the in the notice, correct? Yes, each you, you yeah, the, the well. notice was accurate and complete, and did mention all of the variances that are that are needed. Uh, Lotto nine is the Texas Roadhouse. Again, it's small, uh, lacks frontage. It has a zero lot line subdivision, and it uh, includes excess impervious coverage because of its nature as mostly building and parking. And then you have lot 10. Lot 10 was taken from, what was the German club lot? The LA Fitness is being separated off as lot 10 as an undersized lot having uh, excess impervious coverage and a smaller than necessary side yard between uh, that and the uh, remainder of the big lotto six and most uh, of the, at most the same t at the same time we're obliterating the lot lines from the German club it used to be two lots and it became retail and uh, LA fitness and so we're merging the southern portion which has portions of 06 and eliminating the lot lines having to do with the uh, with the old German club and all of the all of the lot frontages Obviously, all of these lots do not front on a roadway, so we're asking for a variance to permit that to occur. Obviously, they all have access. Is that correct, Joe? They, uh, they, all, actually, they all actually front on the roadway, not necessarily having the adequate width of frontage. Uh, the most peculiar one would have been the BJ's lot, which has previously been approved. That has no road frontage, but depends on the access agreements among the other parties. Joe, can we just go back to the LA Fitness lot, the blue yes. lot? Um, the table in the CME letter identifies the lot as having 158,000 and change square feet. So I'm not cur I'm curious why you think it needs an area variance. Well, I'm sorry, it doesn't. If it it's doesn't. if it's over the 80,000, right. it does not. I stand corrected. Okay. Thank you. And uh, what justifies this is that it's uh, it's a an apparitional move, no physical impact. It only resides in town hall. It helps further the financial development, which is always a benefit to the township, and there is no detriment. So I dare say that the benefits outweigh the detriments because there are no detriments, and the benefit is the systematic furtherance of, uh, of uh, proper, proper financial use. Well, on, on, on the helps. positive criteria that you're, you're trying to testify to. Yes. I mean, it looks like, you're, I mean, aren't you really testifying to Section G of, um, or subsection G of Section 2 of the municipal land use law, which is the, the goals of planning? Yeah. And that's to provide sufficient space and appropriate locations for a variety of agricultural, residential, recreational, commercial uses. And, I mean, from your testimony, would it be fair to say that the entire purpose of this application is to provide an appropriate space for your commercial uses. This is that, what facilitates the commercial uses being in these spaces. That, that's right. It's also consistent with the purposes of your, uh, your master, the goals of your master plan and the purposes of the ordinances themselves is to provide proper commercial space in an adequate location suitable for uh, mercantile exchange. And uh, that serves as a benefit to the community because you've got a multitude of um, goods and services available to your citizenry. And I just want to be clear for the, for the record, for the board, and for, for the public, from an improvements standpoint, there's not a single change to any improvement that was previously uh, you know, granted through a site plan or, or otherwise by this board by virtue of this application. In, in, in total, 
the site uh, meets all of the requirements of the no, approval, no, what I'm the saying approvals, is, and it continues to function without change. You're not no I, physical changes. Right. So there's, there's not a single change to any improvement that was previously approved by this board. That's correct. Okay. Ms. Beam. <clears throat> Um, I take no exception to the relief that's being requested specifically because it is for financing purposes and throughout the entirety of this application um, the site has been evaluated for coverage and drainage and lighting as one comprehensive site and this does not change that so while they need relief you know for coverage for the smaller lots the overall lot is compliant with coverage um, so we don't take any exception to the relief that's being requested. Okay. Tell them you'll call them back. <laughs> My wife. I, oh, I told oh, her I'd call her, but. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sonneblik, uh, or to your witness here. In the future, as the build out, can we expect to see this m probably happening again for the future build out? If Mr. Benito, can you respond to that? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure because I'm not. I said before, I think it's the last one, having spoken to my clients, but if something were to occur and we get another tenant who wants X or Y, we may have to be back, So, I, but I don't know that. It, I don't think there'd be a reason I think Mr. Menino is ready to answer it. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. If he knows. Mr. Menino, do you know? Well, yeah, yes, we, we did try to anticipate um, all the parcel um, subdivisions at this point. Um, I. I, I can't say 100% certainty that we wouldn't ask for something else here, but I, I really don't see any us coming back anytime soon for additional uh, parcels. I, but I can't say again with 100% certainty. Okay. Okay, Mr. Mallon, do you have any further questions? No, sir. Just, just so the board understands. <clears throat> All these sites were analyzed for drainage. One feeds into the other to the other. So we've looked at all of it as far as drainage, and it, and it all works. That's exactly how we've tried to intermingle it and use it. Um, the other thing is that it doesn't change any access to any of, any of the site. Okay. They may not have driveways themselves, these lots. There's only two means of ingress and egress really to the site. And then you have the third means behind the uh, movie theater and BJ's. Correct. Those, are, those are the only accesses. Okay. Other than that, no other comments. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Beam? No, nothing further. Sherry? Any questions of the board? Yes, no. I have a Mr. San Clemente. So the, uh, one question with the, the proposed new lots. There are two lots between the movie theater and BJ's? Uh, everything that's uh, in white is the one lot .06. Uh, what you see there is a, the, the gray of a building that has not been constructed yet. That's the footprint that was approved. And we don't have hard tenants for that yet, so the building is... So that's going to be one building? That could be one. It could be two or three. It depends on how the tenancy shakes out. We, we customize to the tenants. How large is that building? If it's one building, how large would that be, approximately? 75? Yeah, if that were built for one tenant, it would be 75,000 square feet. Could that lot support a movie theater? Well, actually, I, I, I could respond to that, even though as the attorney, that is an economic aspect that I can assure you, as long as there's this movie theater, there's not going to be any other, because as this board is aware, the movie theater that is there now was approved on West Farms Road, and that was determined to be in too close a proximity and they moved it to this site, and there's nothing been built on the West Farms Road site, which still has an approval for a movie theater, but nothing's happened on the site. So when you say, could it be? Sure, it could, if somebody would want to do that. In theory, it would be legal. 
it, 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 it's, it, it's, it's, it's possible but unlikely because the movie theaters tend to protect themselves by by certain well, radiuses and prohibit well, you well, from, let me, from also, also, just again on the history, I mean, we've never approved that particular building for anything like that. So uh, I believe on our current ordinance, we no longer permit movie theaters as a permitted use. So if someone wanted to come and put a movie theater over there and you have not approved that, they have to come here and they would have to, you know, make their proofs before this board. So the, the short answer is no movie theater would go there unless you approved it to go there. What about a concert hall? No, I don't think, uh, places of public assembly, I do not think are, are permitted in the zone. Theater? Not a, a non-movie theater. It's not oh, that's what I'm saying. Places, I don't think um, something like that is a permitted use in our, in our ordinance in the zone. Mr. No. Howard, would you like to re respond to Mr. San Clemente? Uh, a theater, like a playhouse, is not permitted in the HD1 zone. What about like uh, an I Play America, like in Freehold? A recreational use. Recreational type. Indoor recreation is a permitted use yeah, in the HD1 zone. Permitted. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I got it. Thank you. Any other questions? No, that's it. Thank you very okay. much. Any other questions from the board? Seeing none. Uh, any f more from the professionals? Do you have any further witnesses, Mr. Sonnebuck? No, I don't. Okay, at this time, I'll take a motion to open to public. Motion to open to the public. Second. Have a motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? This is in reference to questions on the subdivision. No testimony. The property, sir? I was saying question, questions only or questions no, and testimony? No, question and comments. Okay. All right. And this is based on testimony you've heard tonight. Come forward and be sworn in. You swear or affirm the testimony about to give this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state and spell your name and give us your address. Mark Parisi, M A R C P A R I S I, to Castle Court. Hey, just before you get started, uh, Mr. Parisi, I know, I guess there were several documents you had submitted that are not yet marked. Uh, how many documents do you have? I have approximately eight. Can you just bring them over so I can mark them? Can you do like all of them right now? Yeah. Okay. And then, you know, we'll determine their relevancy after they've been marked. Okay. So just hold on a moment. <laughs> so we'll mark as P1 uh, transcripts from the April 13th, 2015 uh, zoning board hearing. So this will be P1. P1? P1. P for public. P2. I thought, I, I thought it was going to be O. O for objection. <laughs> yeah, I, well, well, we haven't. Objector. You want to be an objector? He is He's an objector. objector. Mr. Sonnenbrook, are you have objections yourself that you want to how we're marking exhibits? I, I, would, I would suggest that as an as a as an objector, Mark should uh, be listed as it with an O. He's he's, a, he's definitely an objector. That's why I notified Mr. Bono. Uh, I know that I know you're an objector. So O two will be yeah will be a four twenty seven fifteen. ZB hearing transcript. This will be O2. This is the zoning board to memorialize resolution from 2015. So O3 will be resolution number 15 10. What is that a resolution for? Um, amended preliminary and final site plan. For AAM Mill. For, for what? I think for it's what? For the movie theater. 
Um, it doesn't say in the title. Yeah, well, we'll check that out. Okay. Okay. What else you got? Yes, it's the movie. It's the movie theater. Okay. So, oh four. So is resolution BA08-0619. SP-A3. And that's 04. Please support from February 22nd, 2017. 05. What is that a report of? Noise complaint. Mr. Kachera, I, I don't think that's relevant in this, you know. Well, we have to mark it for identification. Okay. And then we can talk about the relevancy of everything. Okay. I'm just trying to see if there's a complaint number or anything. No, All right, so this is a 2-22-2017 uh, noise complaint to the Howe Township Police Department. does not have a uh, any identifying number for it. That's 05. Monmouth County Health Department incident notification okay. from May 10th, 2017. Okay, this will be 06. Um, Monmouth County Health Department incident notification. Again, does not look to be uh, identified by a number. This will be 06. It'll be 07. Okay. An acoustical study from July 13th, 2017. This will be uh, from the Noise Consulting Noise Consultancy LLC. Report dated July 13th, 2017. 07. Powell Township Police Department report April, uh, excuse me, October 10th, 2017. Oh, I'm sorry, that's oh, right. That would yeah. be this is 09. Now, and this right? is 09. What is 09 again? I'm sorry. Howell PD uh, incident report 10 10 17. 10 10 17. Okay, thank you. And a notice of violation from the director of land use dated uh, April, uh, November 3rd, 2017. Okay. That will be 010. Okay. Do you need these back, Mr. Preci? Or can we keep these? Uh, I told Ms. Ravano she asked for hard copies, so yeah. those are the boards. Okay. All right. Thank you. I have mine. So just before we get started. Well, actually, yeah. no. I'm going to need them for my testimony because I don't have a copy of the transcript. So okay. if I could just have them and I'll return them to the board. You're welcome. So, you know, just in terms of the scope of tonight's hearing, um, any testimony and exhibits would have to relate to the subdivision application and you know any variances that are you know associated with it okay so, yep All right. thank you good evening board I welcome the new members to the board um, I just uh, want to reintroduce myself. I'm Mark Parisi. I live at Two Castle Court. Uh, I take no pleasure objecting and being an adversarial party before this board but I must assert my rights to protect my interests, namely the peaceful enjoyment of my property. Uh, for the two new board members, this is an ongoing issue for uh, about two years now. Um, my objection relates to compliance with sworn testimony for a prior, prior approval on this bifurcated application, uh, as was previously testified by um, Mr. Sonnenblick and referenced already this evening that this application began in 2008 and it has been subsequently bifurcated as they've continued to build well, I, the shopping plaza. Mr. Parisi, just to help the board and, and myself, the noise complaint though, how does that relate to the subdivision or any of the variances that are associated with the subdivision? I was going to get to that. Do you want me just to jump right to that right now? Yeah, because I think that's a threshold issue. Okay. All right. So. I previously objected to uh, the application 
of uh, BA 0806 SPA 3, which was when they, this applicant came before this board in uh, November and December of 2016 uh, to put in the Texas Roadhouse Grill. Uh, most of the board was here for that and heard some of that testimony. The approved resolution for that application uh, references in, on page 23 of that approval. It talked about how um, the, the crux of what is going on here is that there were representations made in sworn testimony for the movie theater that they guaranteed there was going to be no noise. And uh, Ms. Mr. I, I object, Kachero, I object to that statement. Today. We can't. There, there's pending litigation. Well, and I don't want to air that in, in this board. The, the pen, well, we're not talking about the merits of the pending litigation. I would just let him finish his sentence, and then I'll okay. I'll deal with it. Okay. So, in the approved resolution that um that I have here in front of me, it said that the fact that a requirement may be a subject of testimony and not a specific condition is not relevant. An applicant is bound by all representations, and it cites a case law of Fierro Masco versus Barnegat Township. So, I wrote the resolution, so I'm familiar right. with it. I'm familiar with the Fierro Masco case and. Later on in the resolution, what we say is that that was not the forum um, to adjudicate whether there's been a violation of a condition and that there are other uh, mechanisms to do that, whether it be through a Section 18 um, action in Superior Court, whether it be in a noise complaint in a municipal court, or whether it be um, you know, making a complaint to, to Mr. Howard's office. but. You can't use this application for a subdivision as a mechanism to enforce the prior ordinance. That statement in the resolution remains the same today, that right. they are bound by all representations. And if they are not in compliance with them, it is to be handled the same way that a violation of an ordinance is handled. And we don't do that here at the zoning board. We, we can do what we did previously, you know, when you filed with Mr. Howard and you filed an appeal from Mr. Howard. But we do not have the power under the municipal land use law to use this as a vehicle to determine whether there has been a violation of a term. That what is in the prior resolutions is there. Mm -hmm. It is still applicable. They are still bound by it. But we are not an enforcement agency. So we can't sit here and make them do or not do anything. We have enforcement officials. Um, I think we can take judicial note that you filed a complaint with the municipal court, which I believe is still pending, correct? Are you talking about the prerogative writ? No, I'm talking about there was a noise complaint right. that's still pending in municipal court here in Howe, correct? Right. But I wanted to get to the bifurcated issue and the negative criteria. I was trying to get to that, which okay, would well, give the how relevance does, of why how, I can present this testimony. Right, but when we're talking about the negative criteria in a bifurcated application, we are talking about how this application would fare under the negative criteria. So under this application, how would noise be an issue when you're only changing the location of invisible lines? Well, based upon your, the, this board's resolution, it says here that it is undisputed that this that's applicant... Not, that's, that, that is not my understanding of the well, can statement Can I just put it on the record? You can, I believe you did before, but yes. No, I haven't you, put this on the record. Well, let's okay. hear it. So, in the resolution, it states, it is undisputed that this application flows from a prior application seeking bifurcated use variance relief. On a bifurcated application, the statute specifically provides that the applicant is subject to the additional obligation of showing that the proposed site plan or subdivision plat approval can be granted without detriment to the public good or impairment of the intent of the zone plan and zoning ordinance. And then cites the case of Alaco versus Lucarelli, or Alaco and Lucarelli versus Homedale, and then goes on to state, this essentially means that the negative criteria carries forward to a subsequent site plan or subdivision approval. So I'm here tonight, since this is a subdivision approval, to address the board and let them know that this applicant that made sworn testimony. Yeah, that but that's, that's a misreading of what that statement of law means. It means that when you come back for a further approval, the subject of that subsequent approval still has to satisfy the negative criteria. Not that something that's not involved in the subsequent application needs to reprove the negative criteria. 
It's that this application has to show that what they're trying to do here tonight does not violate the negative criteria. And what they're doing here tonight is moving lot lines around. So I still don't see how you can get to giving us jurisdiction to go back and, and say there's an enforcement issue on the noise or to consider the noise at all because that's not what they're doing tonight. Our limited scope is what are they doing tonight and does that uh, fail or satisfy the negative criteria? As it only relates to subdivision? What they're proposing tonight, the subdivision and its ancillary variance relief. So when the, the continuing obligation for the negative criteria is not open-ended for anything, it's the, the, the thing that is being proposed in a subsequent application is that, that is what is subject to the, the ongoing negative <coughs> criteria. Not to pull, you know, from anything that they've done on the property, but are what you, what is it that's being proposed in the subsequent application and is that um, consistent or violative of the, the negative Well, then criteria? I would ask Mr. Sonnenblick, are you seeking a continuation of existing variances and waivers? You can ask me, I'm not a witness. Well, I can tell you we're not, we are not considering uh, previous relief it's been granted the only thing we're considering tonight is a request for subdivision and the variances that are associated with that subdivision but this is a bifurcated application can can someone answer the question are they seeking a continuation of existing variances and waivers no and that's not what we're considering they have that what their continuing obligation is to satisfy the negative criteria for what future applications are proposing Mr. Chair, I don't think it's a bifurcated application. It is, here. because they were only granted use variance relief early on. They weren't granted site plans and uh, subdivisions. So when you are operating off of a prior use variance and you come back only for a subdivision, that's a bifurcation because you're not considering it all in one. Okay. So, so legally, you're telling me that tonight that addressing issues of compliance with prior sworn testimony on a bifurcated application that I cannot do that tonight. You can't do it here. We're not an enforcement agency. I'm not seeking enforcement. I'm asking the board to deny the application you, you because they're not in compliance. You characterized it as an enforcement issue, I think. I compliance did not. Compliance issue. Well, compliance, compliance is, is a board issue. Enforcement no, is not. Mr. No. Howard's issue. No, it's not. Uh, well, <laughs> it's the same issue compliance and if there's not compliance enforcement we're not here to judge compliance that's very clear in the municipal land use law we're we're tightly circumscribed in in what our jurisdiction and role is and if the municipal land use law doesn't permit us to do it and the law is very clear that we consider the applications we're not here to determine compliance with prior approvals that is what our enforcement officials do so i'm not telling you that you can't seek to enforce the terms of prior resolutions. What I'm telling you is this is not the place to do it. And I mean, and you've availed yourself of several of those forums, which are, you know, which are in play. But, you know, we as a zoning board do not have the jurisdiction to go back and say, you're out of compliance with, with such and such. Plus, the issue that you raise isn't really associated with the relief and the subdivision that they're seeking tonight. So my, and, you know, I could be wrong, but, you know, my view of the municipal land use law is that's not something that would be in our purview for what we are um, being asked to look at tonight. Well, respectfully, would you allow me to just succinctly cover what I want to cover, make my record, and then allow the board to give it a to-do weight? Well, but we're not. Isn't that not, you, is that within my right? Your right is to provide testimony um, that is legally relevant. And the board has the right to exclude testimony which is not relevant. So and that's why I said this was a threshold issue. Your statement is that your testimony has to do with noncompliance of a previous resolution concerning a noise issue. And my question to you is how does a noise issue relate to uh, the subdivision or the variances related to that subdivision? And you've, you've answered me. You know, you've advanced your legal argument. I don't find it to be a meritorious legal argument for this board, you know, in terms of its relevance. So my legal recommendation would be that no, because it is not relevant, it should be excluded because it's not within our jurisdiction. Okay, and if you feel as though your 
counsel to the board is on firm legal standing, then I will respectfully walk away. But if 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 I if it is within my right to be here tonight and to address these issues on this bifurcated application, then I hope that you've advised the board correctly. So do I. And so do I. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, what I can tell you is that, you know, I sit at this or any number of boards three nights a week. It's, it's what I do. One of the major portions and, and goals of the municipal land use law is to provide public participation. But equally important in the municipal land use law is that that participation not be irrelevant or repetitive. So, yes, I believe that, uh, you know, our legal rights in that regard are firmly grounded in the municipal land use law, which does not permit the board to indulge in, in arguments that are beyond its jurisdiction. But I also, I want to be clear, and, you know, I, I think I was, I was clear with you the last time also, that I offer no opinion on, on, you know, that you have no recourse, just that this is not the body, you know, to, uh, to, to advance prior not you know non-compliance with prior um, conditions and resolutions okay so if this were a development application the circumstances would be different no a it's technical subdivision well first of all i don't really recognize the technical subdivision okay mr sonnenblick noticed for a preliminary and final major subdivision the word technical is more uh, nomenclature for the lack of complexity in the in the application but the notice has you know preliminary and final major subdivision and that's what we're considering tonight okay all right so i will have to step aside and not present my case regarding uh, compliance on this bifurcated application i thank the board for their time thank you okay, is there anyone else from the public that wishes to Ask question or comment. Seeing none, can I have a motion to close? Motion by Mr. Amata. Seconded, Seconded by Mr. O'Donnell. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Okay, is there any further statements or from the professionals? No, Mr. Board Chair. members? Mr. Further? Chairman. Actually, since we have new board members, do you want me to go over positive and negative criteria at all? Uh, or? Not, I, I'm going to let Mr. Sonneblick finish up his application okay. here, and then you know, I'll let you address the board or you know, the professionals. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sonneblick. Uh, thank you. I would request that the board approve this uh, application. It has no physical effect on this site. You have previously done so. Everything will work as it has been with all the approvals that we have. And as your professionals have indicated, uh, we are complying with all of their requirements. And this is just a matter of which, as Mr. Lalka indicated, to further the completion of the development so that we have a integrated shopping center to the benefit of Howell Township. And for the new members and those members who might not have been here many years ago, uh, when this site was developed for this shopping center, there were significant improvements that the owners made, including Lanes Mills Road, Route 9, Kent Road, and all of these were put together so that millions of dollars were spent to make this center a reality. And all of these tenants are the ultimate result of the overall development of this center and for those who are not aware of this there was a piece of property called the German Club and basically the board wanted us to acquire it so that it would make it into an integrated development with access to Lanes Bills Road ultimately we did acquire it that's why we have LA Fitness and we're here today uh, simply looking for a technical subdivision notwithstanding that it is an amended preliminary and final, but it's only on a technical nature. We are not asking for any specific physical relief at this time, other than the lot line. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Kachera. Sure. And, and again, this is more for, for our new board members. Many of you, this, you could probably just doze off for a few moments while I 
why I do this. So as a zoning board, applicants come here essentially because they're not compliant with what our zoning ordinance requires. In this instance, the subdivision, whether they're actual physical lines or not, creates a number of variances. So they're here to get a subdivision and to get variances. So the variances, you have to determine whether they've satisfied what we call positive and negative criteria. The testimony is, and the positive criteria basically shows that it advances goals of planning and there's a public benefit rather than purely a personal benefit. The argument you've heard tonight is that this is what makes the site work. This is what will allow them to provide the variety of commercial uses in the area uh, in order to get the financing uh, that's, that's necessary. The negative criteria is that there has to be an absence of any substantial detriment to the zone plan or the zoning ordinance. The argument you've heard tonight is they're not changing anything. All that is being changed are lot lines that are invisible. You can't see them. And I asked them specifically, you know, there are no changes to any improvements. The site today is the same as the site is going to look if you grant an approval. So, you know, that is the background in determining you know, whether there's any detriment to the, uh, to the community. So if anyone has any questions while you're deliberating, you know, I can certainly answer them. But for the new guys, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background as to the, you know, criteria you'd be looking at tonight. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Okay. What's the pleasure of the board? I have one question. Yes, sir. I, I would say that although it was an interesting piece of history, it's irrelevant for our purposes tonight. No. The, the, the oh, reason, Mr. Armada, just to there. respond to your question, when the, when the resolution initially for the DJs, uh, which did not include the land for the German club, was proposed, the board recognized that it would be appropriate if we were to be able to acquire it and put in the resolution that if we were to acquire it, we would change the roadway into Lansville's Road. So when I made the statement, I'm not suggesting that the board said, go buy it. I'm suggesting that in recognizing that it fit, and we agreed at that time with the board that if we were to acquire the property, we would integrate it as the board suggested it should be. And that's all. And so it was something that everybody looked at from a planning sense, and your planner and your, everybody sort of knew that it sort of fit, but but there was no but direct we, but we, call but, but from you this know, board. No, you didn't give us any money to buy it, though. No. No. Unfortunately. Okay. What's the pleasure of the board? Well, members of the board, looking over this application is just a technical, it's just drawing of lines that we will not see. And being in that case, there will be no physical improvements, nothing. It's just all for what is called technical. I'm going to make a motion to approve this application, and also the applicant did agree to comply with all engineering and planning that has been stated by Jack and by Mika at the time. Got a motion? Do I have a second? For a second? Yes. Yeah, I'll second that motion. And I'd like to add that uh, I don't see any negative criteria about this at all. Uh, to me, our professionals put their opinions in, and everything is on a positive note. Just not sure. You don't need any variances at this point, right? Now he asked for a yeah. whole host of variances. You're granting many variances tonight. Uh, I want to make sure of that. So, yeah. Got a motion by Mr. San Clemente, seconded by Mr. O'Donnell. Can we have a roll call, please? And yes, further sir. findings of facts. Mr. Amada? Yes. Mr. Mertens? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Posh? Yes. Mr. San Clemente? Yes. Mr. Orozco? Yes. And Chairman Nancy? There will be no further change to the site it will operate the same way that it has 
from day one. There's no no change within drainage, parking, access, snow removal, lighting, anything. There's no change. There's one maintenance company that's handling the whole property, AEM Mills. And so my vote is yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before we get into anything else, our DPW director has just informed us that the roads are icing up. They have sanded or salted, but to just please be very careful going home. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a 10-minute break, and we will discuss the weather to see if we move forward, see what it looks like outside, if you don't mind. Okay. This time, the zoning board is going to take a 10-minute break. We'll meet back at 920. The board will now recess for 10 minutes. The board will now reconvene. Okay, case number BA-17-17, Mobile Tech Security Systems, LLC. Preliminary final major site plan and use variance. Application of Mobile Tech Security Systems, LLC, is applicant in MRW Properties, LLC, and Oak Lynn 641, LLC, is owners seeking preliminary and final major site plan and use variance for approval to construct a 4,000 square foot building with 1,600 square foot mezzanine office to be used for a towing business on premises known as Block 42, Lots 23, 24, 641, Oak Glen Road. Expiration date, March 28, 2018. Mr. Cohen. Chairman, for the record, my name is Todd Cohen. I'm the attorney for the Applicant Mobile Tech Security Systems, LLC. I believe Ron would like to make a... Yes. Stephen, although your name is not Ron Cachero, it's... That's Ron true. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cohen. And uh, good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, I just want to put something on the record just by way of background information. Many of you may remember, um, as sitting members, the case of uh, Mobile Tech, which came before the board about two years ago. Um, the matter was litigated, and it was a settlement agreement, you may recall, that brought the case back tonight. Just a few ground rules... Uh, this is a new application. Some of you are familiar with the uh, Whispering Woods case. This is not a Whispering Woods hearing. This is a de novo or from the beginning case. Testimony will not be uh, incorporated by reference from the prior matters. Uh, I am sure Mr. Cohen will uh, present Mr. Geller and Mr. Higgins. Um, this is stripped down, this application. Uh, basically, it'll be simply, and again, I'm not trying to steal Mr. Cohen's thunder, my understanding is it's going to be a single use as opposed to a um, more than a, a one use, a warehouse use. I believe that the testimony will indicate that uh, the, it'll be basically one use, but I'm going to let Mr. Cohen deal with that. Um, you're not under any obligation to approve this application. Obviously, the case is back here for the applicant to show the board, after hearing the concerns that the board placed on the record, what they've done, that they have changed the application, and uh, they're back again. And again, that's just for your information. I'll let Mr. Cohen go forward with his opening statement. But again, that is the agreement. It is a new application and not a Whispering Woods settlement. Mr. Cohen, do you agree with those comments? Yes, I do. Um, just Thank very you. briefly, in addition to what Ron said, I believe in the settlement agreement there were uh, not conditions, but the applicant was allowed to refile the application for the single use as opposed to uh, the various unspecified uses at the last application, and there was a limitation on the square footage uh, allowed for the building. Okay. Uh, the applicant is, uh, this new application does incorporate those conditions, and we're prepared to, as Ron stated, uh, start again and present the new case. Okay. You want to swear in your witnesses? Yes, your I'd like to swear witnesses? Them both in, and then we can get the exhibits marked, right. and then we can start with testimony. Okay. Whoever will be testifying, Mr. Cohen, is your uh, Mr. Geller as a professional engineer, and Mr. Higgins as a professional planner. Very good. The gentleman, raise your hand. Mr. Geller, you're 
your right hand to swear the testimony of you this evening to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth of God. I, I do. do. Right. Uh, it's my name, Mr. Higgins. Uh, please put your name on the record. Uh, James Higgins, H I G G I N S. Thank you, Mr. Geller. Michael Geller, G E L L E R. You're with me. Michael, you have uh, various exhibits that we need to mark uh, and pass to the board at this yes, time? Yes, I've given the exhibits uh, reduced size to the board secretary. We have four exhibits. First would be A13. Uh, actually, we start with A14. The first is A13 with the proofs, right? Yes, and I didn't have that on there, sorry. A14 is a color aerial rendering, which is also posted on the board here. And that's a color aerial rendering showing the site and the surrounding area on an aerial photograph. Dated January 8th, 18. Day 15. He doesn't have to mark them. I'll use the little ones. Yeah. You're fine, Tom. Uh, yeah, because I have them here. Okay, you're going to use the little ones? You don't we need to mark those? I no, thought we he already marked, marked the small ones. ones. Okay. I'm sorry. We need to identify these, so I'm fine. Oh. But we need to identify them for the record. Yes, but I don't need to mark them. Okay. A15 is a Sorry. color rendering of the site itself, showing the proposed improvements, and that is dated January 8, 2018. A16 is 11 by 17 copies of a colored rendering of the architectural plans that were submitted and are now been enhanced with colored rendering. Prepared by KCON, showing the proposed building. And A17 is a photo exhibit having 19 pages, which shows the condition of the property and the surrounding areas dating back to about 2008 through 2018. And who took those photos and when? They were taken by me, and the date of each photograph is indicated in the exhibits themselves. It varies from May of 2008 as late as January 2nd, 2018. Thank you. Mr. Gale, you're obviously familiar with the uh, application. Could you please present to the board this evening the request for site plan and the use? Yes. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, describe the existing site. The existing site is shown on the color aerial rendering. It consists of two tax lots, tax, 23, tax lot 23 and 24 in block 42. This site is on the easterly side of the dead-end portion of Oakland Road. Uh, Oakland Road, previous to its realignment with Lakewood Farmingdale Road, used to travel and across the road at a very <coughs> acute angle. Uh, when the county reconstructed the intersections of Oakland Road and Lakewood Farmingdale Road, it resulted in a dead end portion of the southerly portion of Oakland Road. This property fronts on that dead end portion. The property contains an area of 14.88 acres. It's actually about 340 feet in width. It has about 300 feet of frontage on Oakland Road, and it's about 1,950 feet in depth. So it's very deep and relatively narrow, but not too narrow. Um, the county realigned the road uh, in the late 1990s, early 2000s. So as I said, the remainder of Oakland Road, uh, the dead end portion, is what this property fronts on. It's still a public road, and it still has road frontage as defined by the land use law. The property is situated in what's known as the ARE6 Agricultural Rural Estate Zone, in which six acres is required. Uh, that allows an assortment of uses, typically uh, residential agricultural uses. Uh, but in this case, uh, the site of this property is situated, uh, also has a, a encumbrance of a stream that travels in a north to south direction known as Tark Hill and Brook. The stream has adjacent wetlands areas which have been delineated and approved two different times by the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. The wetlands themselves have a 50-foot buffer. The stream itself also has a 300-foot riparian buffer in accordance with the township uh, ordinances. The uh, property uh, would be uh, totally, any proposed development as proposed by this application would be totally outside the 300 foot buffer as defined. So the env environmentally sensitive areas of the site would be outside of any proposed development. 
Uh, formerly, there was a house situated on Lot 24. It was burnt down about 2004, 13 years ago. Property is now vacant and mostly wooded, except for the front portion of the property closest to Oakland Road that was cleared when there were approvals for two houses that were obtained in about 2008. Uh, it's noted that the developed portion of the site would be on about 1.73 acres in the front portion of the site. The rear portion would be left unencumbered by uh, any development. In referring to uh, A15, the colored rendering of the proposed site plan, you can see how more clearly how the wetlands are delineated. There's a 50-foot buffer, and then the 300-foot uh, stream corridor is a good 150 <coughs> feet from the wetlands and that would be constrained and monumented for uh, uh, defining where the conservation area is versus the proposed development. That would leave approximately uh, close to 13 acres, over 13 acres of undeveloped land in the rear uh, easterly portion of the site. Back, as I said, back in uh, 2006, we were first involved in this project, and there were two plot plans and septic approvals that were done for the front portion of the property. Each of those received Monmouth County Health Department approvals and uh, Hal Township zoning permits to permit the construction of single-family dwellings, due mainly to the condition and the uses of the area and the adjacent areas to the site. Those properties never were purchased for uh, residential development. I believe if you refer to A17, the photo exhibit, which I've given you, it demonstrates the conditions on the property, the power lines that exist south of the property in the JCP&L uh, easement. Uh, lot 22 is totally owned by JCP&L, and 20 foot of their easement actually encompasses the southerly portion of Lot 23. Uh, that also lended to the fact that the property was not conducive to uh, residential development. The zones of the property, uh, the property is ARE 6. Uh, further south is an ARE 2 zone, uh, north side of Vienna Road, up until the southerly limit of adjacent lot 22 is ARE 2. Across Oakland Road south and uh, east of Lakewood Farmingdale Road is also ARE 2. That property is mainly the JCPNL power line. Across uh, Lakewood Farmingdale Road is ARE2 property. You'll know that at the corner of Meadow Lane, there's that general store that's in the ARE2 zone, but it's not a permitted use, but still developed as a commercial grocery for some time, a general store deli, if you will. And then north of uh, Oakland Road, further north on Lakewood Farmingdale Road, is the Special Economic Development SED zone, which is a zone that's conducive to what's being proposed tonight by the applicant. Um, that describes basically the zones of the area and the adjacent properties. Uh, I'd like to describe just a little bit about the history. I already talked about uh, we were involved with the property since 2005. We were un under contract to purchase the lots and had the wetlands delineated from 2006 to 2008 we obtained Monmouth County Health Department and Hal Township zoning permits that would permit the residential development. Due mainly to the conditions of the road, the nature of the uh, parking and things that occurred in the dead end portion of Oakland Road, there were always trailers and uh, the former owner had, the owner had a wood business. There was wood piles uh, all over the place. Uh, there was also the owner of the adjacent property had a roofing business and Generally, the area was a little bit unkempt, and it wasn't uh, conducive to allowing the residential development that was proposed. So a lot of the uh, purchasers that came to look at the property were scared off by not only that condition, but the condition of the power lines to the immediate south. As you know, there's uh, towers that have power lines on them, and in the last two years, JCPNL has constructed a second power line on monopoles. Uh, in the same right of way. So that is also lending to the fact that the residences uh, are not really uh, particularly suitable there. Um, so our conclusion from nearly 12 or 13, almost 13 years of involvement with the property 
is the lots, although they were approved for residential development in accordance with the ARE6 zoning, they are not really conducive or sellable as single-family residential lots. Therefore, we would find, and Mr. Higgins will address it more in planning testimony, that the lots are not particularly suited to the uses that are permitted in the ARE6 zone. Having said that, I'd like to propose the, uh, describe the proposed site development. The proposed development, as depicted on A15, the colored rendering of the site, <coughs> the colored rendering of the actual engineered plans, it's actually a rendering of the landscape plan, more or less. It's uh, in accordance with the terms of the settlement agreement between the owner's applicants and the board, which called for a single user. It would be one single towing operation business. No future development, no phasing of the project. Everything would be in a single phase. It would be a proposed a building of 4,000 square feet, 50 feet in width by 80 feet in depth. The first floor would be an 800 square foot area that has a customer service a waiting area for people that may get a tow and are waiting for a pickup. And then the remaining 3,200 square feet is the storage for his tow vehicles. Uh, the second story mezzanine that was also approved in the settlement or called for in the settlement agreement calls for uh, 50 by 32 or uh, 1,600 square feet of mezzanine space, which is for offices in support of the business. Um, the building would be served by a paved parking area, entirely paved. Uh, entrance off of the Oakland Road dead end, very close to the intersection with the main line, Oakland Road. A 30-foot access aisle. There will be 30-foot aisles entirely around. That's conducive with what the a fire bureau looks for 30-foot wide aisles. They are provided. There's a fenced-in area from the front portion of the building around the periphery of the parking lot. It's entirely fenced. It will have slats. That's consistent with the requirements of the Township Towing Ordinance, which is covered in Chapter 306. And Chapter 306-13 specifically calls for the towing uh, standards uh, for uh, storage yards. That being, all owners must apply for a Certificate of Commercial Occupancy for Towing Operations, uh, Subsection D2. New storage facilities authorized after January 2007 must be paved or concrete. The entire surfaces here are paved. There's concrete curbing around the periphery. All the drainage is controlled. I'll get to that in a second. And uh, all storage facilities must have a six-foot chain link fence surrounding the compound. And the fame chain links should be provided with uh, slat inserts for privacy. Okay. And that's also proposed. Mr. Gillard, uh, the areas where, uh, will this have impound? Will they be doing impound for the police department? Uh, the front, the rear 59 spaces are surrounded by fencing, or the in, uh, compact. The well, front, uh, I forget the number, I think 19 spaces or so are in front, are for the office workers and employees. But my, my question is, is this going to be an impound yard? For the, wrecked vehicles? I will get to that in a moment, but yes, okay. it is certified by, uh, on the Hal Township zoning list, the rear uh, parking for about 12 vehicles has its own separate fenced-in area okay. within the fenced-in compound. Okay, now my question to you would be, would the applicant have a problem putting that in concrete, that, that section that he's going to have back there for rather brick vehicles pavement. yeah rather than asphalt diesel fuels gasoline oil motor oils they they eat right through asphalt well in lieu yes well the, the board engineer has asked for a heavy duty pavement uh in lieu of the bituminous pavement which is at four and two inch section he could put in a five or six inch concrete mr mallon would you have an issue with that no i, I think six inch Six-inch concrete. Okay. Yeah, tractor trailer, handle a tractor trailer. If Just for that rear compound. Is, Mike, can you show where that, that compound is? Because I don't see the fence there in the area. I, I see a partial fence. It shows up on the... No, on the lower right. Just... Right there. Yeah. 
But that, that's not. It needs to. It needs to be, oh, be deflected okay, better so on the drawing. The rear 12 spaces would need a fence. Uh, I stand right? corrected. It's the rear area here that would be the compound area. It's in the south oh, eastern corner. Isn't that drainage mark off? Excuse me? Aren't those for drainage that mark off? Those that squares? No, uh, the fence didn't make it to the plant. We agreed to fence that rear area off. As a separate compound for rec vehicles. But Mike, explain Mike, what's up on the board oh, there with a showing of rectangle. Oh, that's that's underground uh, okay. right. that's stormwater recharge. But the uh, the area on the board here is where should be the compound. Your twelve states to reach southeast of the site. So you're insinuating that the only wrecked vehicles will exist in that concrete section. And I'm never going to go over there and see a wrecked vehicle of any sort on the other parts that are asphalt. There might be vehicles that are towed, but they're not necessarily considered wrecked vehicles that have to be there for a lengthy period of time. Anything behind the fences could be the parking of a towed vehicle. And most a mechanical vehicles, breakdown could be a something that happens on a highway that doesn't necessarily make it a wreck, per se. So there will be vehicles. Most towing yards I know have wrecks all over the place. Yeah. So that, that doesn't fly. It's got to be concrete wherever you put a vehicle, in my mind. Oh, so you want in lieu of the pavement, all concrete? Anywhere a vehicle is going to be stored. Mr. Mallon? Well, The alternative is to put in something for oil separators and water quality. Yeah, but that doesn't address the the fluids. I I've seen diesel fluid just go right through asphalt. I okay. mean, oh, it, I agree. It, it just blows right through. Oh, oh. and not well, gasoline only gasoline does too. Get ga yeah, but it, it, up, it, it up. gasoline has to sit for a while to do it. But you know, it evaporates so quick. But the other thing is, is road salts. Road salts with diesel fuel. It just, yeah. and but not only that, but you're right above the recharge basin. Right. Repairing and buffer. It, it, we're going to have to do something. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the applicant has agreed that the entire comp area to the rear of the fence would be concrete. Surface. Okay. And then not only that, the you're going to have to look into water stop, you know, to try to keep water from print. Penetrate because you're going to have expansion joints and. I'd like to address stormwater in a moment. I haven't gotten to that point. If you'd like to let me finish. <coughs> well, I'm I'm talking about going down the expansion joints and everything. You know they, that's. Well, expansion joints have expansion material in there. I mean, there's. Yeah, but they they they're not going to stop water unless it's an expansion. You know, a water stop. You know, it, it would have to be designed well, for the water going stop. To flow to the inlets. There's enough pitch on the on the. On the and surface, that will run side. to the inlets that are provided around the site. Yeah, but you're still going to have infiltration through. If you let an expansion joint go, you know, for a couple of years, and you got an open expansion joint, it's going to drain right into that. You know, that that's my concern: is infiltrating oils, gases, diesels and you got a key into that side. because, you know, right behind you, you're a very environmentally sensitive area right behind you're right on the border of that the 300 foot repairing and I, I understand you can design it to pitch with the concrete curb design back for infiltration proper infiltration I understand that but if water stands in there anywhere on the expansion joints it can go through I, I would just to seal the surface of the expansion joints with a impermeable but, uh, the only way you can do that Michael you, you'd have to you'd have to key it with a water stop yeah with the water stop that's what he wants you know there, there's really not much difference in the price of an expansion joint to, to key it with water stop Mr. Armada, does that answer your question? Okay, okay. Now, as far as the catch basin and things, are they going to be treated? Just let me get to that. One okay. Second, Mr. Chairman. 
final last night. Just because of that crack, right? It's called the water stuff. No, you have to key it. Before we get to that, let me just talk about the towing operations. Okay. So The uh, towing is known as All the Way Towing is the name of the business. Been in business for about 12 plus years. It comes uh, the, the current ball, site is Barney Service wide. at the Lakewood Farmingdale Road, County Line Road intersection <laughs> in Lakewood. We use it to so relocate to this facility in Howell. They have contracts with the New Jersey walls. State Troopers. They're on the Howell Township Police towing list. Currently the business owner is the applicant and there's one or two other employees. The hours are typical business hours unless there's an emergency call at other times. Vehicles are towed to the site and parked at the site. Typical 70% of the vehicles that are towed are there for less than three days. Sometimes they may stay a week to 10 days depending on the nature of the uh, damage to the vehicle and the need for inspections by insurance companies and things like that. Um, average of five vehicles per day are towed to the site and there are no sales of vehicles, and there are no repairs of vehicles that take place at this facility. Okay. Mr. Geller, will they be doing maintenance on their own vehicles at I this location? Sometimes small oil changes or something like that in the building. They, the they will have proper facilities to deal with that? Yes. You know, pro proper disposal of, of oils and yes, gases? Yes, they waste oil until it's right. away. Will they have any fuel stored on the site? Okay. Uh, cars that are come in, will they be prepped if they stay over, say, three days? If they stay over, will the fuels be drained out of those cars or prepped? Or You'd have to be sworn in if he's going to testify. Why don't you complete your, okay. Yes. Okay. Complete your testimony and then we'll, whatever questions we'll uh, ask. One of okay. We talked about the entire 30-foot perimeter uh, access aisle around the building. Storm water is collected by a series of inlets in the parking area. The entire site is curved so that no storm water leaves overland into the conservation area. The uh, groundwater, each inlet is equipped with an inlet filter. It's detailed on the plan, which serves as the initial capture for any oil or grease or debris. Drainage from the inlets drains to a water quality basin that's situated within the 20-foot uh, JCP now easement and a little bit wider. It's a water quality swale in the southerly portion of the site. It uh, is designed for the water quality two-year storm. It allows any of the particulates to infiltrate into the soil before getting into a stormwater recharge system. That's that rectangular area that's depicted on A15. And that recharges the st uh, storm water such that there's zero net runoff from the site off-site into the wetlands. Okay. This site will be served by a sanitary septic system in the front portion. Uh, there's a very low septic use for the number of employees and the square footages of this building. We also have an individual well in one of the safety islands in the parking lot. Uh, landscape and lighting will be installed. There will be pole-mounted lights on the outside of the parking light, and there's four wall-mounted lights on the building in the centers of the building. They're about 16 feet in height. All the light is downward directed. It's LED lighting. There's ability to control. You'll look at the lighting plan. There's zero lighting emitted off-site to the neighbor to the north, and there will be no glare onto adjacent properties. Um, a wilderness management plan has been prepared. It is compliant with township requirements. As we said, the easterly 13 plus acres of the site will remain wooded. It is that portion that is adjacent to the farm on lot six, which shows on A14. And there will be a 50 foot farmland buffer to the farm to the uh, east. From an environmental perspective, the proposed development is outside of the most constrictive limit of the 300-foot buffer. Storage, right? The 1.73 acres of the 14.8 acre site uh, stormwater management provisions are proposed. That results in zero net outflow from the site. There would be a planted buffer along the northerly property line. One of your engineer's comments was to install the plantings on a berm. The applicant does agree to put the berm in 
in lieu of that, they will take out the post and rail fence that was proposed, but they will plant on a berm and make the entire fencing chain link vinyl slats along the perimeter of the developed portion. Um, so the environmental impacts of the proposed development are negligible. Uh, Mr. Higgins will give the planning testimony to address this use variance. There is a front setback variance that's requested and impervious coverage because in ARE 6, those numbers are very small. Mr. Uh, Higgins will address that, as well as there's a minor uh, perimeter buffer variance along the westerly Oakland Road frontage and the southerly JCPNL abutting uh, side yard. Uh, we do ask for some design waivers. I'd like to address them very briefly, if I may. Okay. The uh, engineering report <clears throat> has design waivers for the fence height. The fence height where it's in the front yard, uh, technically in the ARE 6 zone, the front yard is 100 feet. Our building is proposed at about 82 feet from uh, Oakland Road. And in those areas where the fence meets the front of the building, that six-foot fence height exceeds the four-foot maximum. So in those areas, because of the towing ordinance standards, we are requesting relief. Design waiver. Uh, the planner pointed out that the lighting intensity exceeds the uh, township ordinance calls for a minimum of 0.3 foot candles, no. a maximum average of 0.5. In the there are certain areas under the lights that are one and a half, two foot candles, we talked about and we acknowledge that those exceed the, the ordinance. That has been a customary design waiver with the LED lights, the way they operate. And the, uh, the ordinance standard is quite old, I might add. So what we are off offering is that, of course, the lights would be off unless the site is in use. The lights on the uh, wall-mounted lights would be on timers, motion-detected uh, sensors. If someone should get into the yard, they would be set off, and the lights would be turned on only as needed, but would all the time be off after 10. Uh, under 3, Section 188-32C6, uh, landscaping around the refuse enclosure, we're asking for a waiver of that because the refuse enclosure is in the middle of the yard. The rear of the refuse enclosure is the entire wooded area of the conservation. We believe there's significant uh, plantings elsewhere on the site to mitigate that relief. The enclosure is fenced and enclosed, and we'd like that to be what's required as opposed to landscape. I'm going to stop you right Jennifer, do you have a problem with that? Um, I don't have a problem specifically with no plantings around the enclosure. I have a problem with the chain link enclosure. The enclosure needs to be masonry. Masonry? Yeah. Because, first of all, you're going to have cars in and out of there constantly, oh, and, you know, the tow, the tow trucks and the other vehicles, and that a chain link fence is just not going to withstand the activity on the site. We agree with that. Okay. Okay, okay Mr. Geller. Um, one of the uh, board engineer's comments calls for the planting of one shrub and one tree and shrub for every 10 parking spaces. Although they're not all proposed within the parking, there are sufficient plantings around the perimeter that offers that rate of landscaping. There are the safety islands where landscaping is proposed, and even within the parking lot where there's safety islands, there is landscaping. So we ask for a way to that. Sherry, do you, do you have an issue with that? Yeah, um, I, I had counted that they had the right amount with... Uh, plantings throughout the site. It was in the engineer's report, not the uh, plant. Right. Not mine. But, right. but a lot of times we look for it in little islands to break up the sea of pavement. But in this case, you know, we like to see that in the shopping center or something. You're right. But I think in this case, you're really not going to have it. I don't have a problem with it. Well, I see, I see, I have... see planting in the islands. As yeah, there's a couple are. of islands. but I, usually... I would much rather see those plantings go in the perimeter than in okay. those islands in there, Mr. And, Geller. Yes, we do have plantings in all the perimeter areas, and we are actually, uh, in accordance with the comments of both the planner and the engineer, are proposing to intensify the planting in the Oakland Road frontage right. to provide an evergreen screening right. of the parking headlights. Yeah, but you show some in the islands inside the parking yeah, lot. there's two in there. Just, well, actually, take there's three. Yeah. Oh, we'll take them out. I would move them to in, into that island, you know, up in front of okay. Oakland Road. No, not really. We'll do that. Is, is that okay, Sherry? Okay. Thank you. We'll do that. Um, 
Yeah, that's fine. Do you want them to leave the one at the front of the building? Yeah, the front of the building island? is fine, but it, those two islands that are in the parking okay, lot, yeah. I would that's move them back. Okay. All you right, know. so just move the two then. That's fine. Yes, we'll take care of that. And they're small. They're ornamental, so, I mean, you could still put them in the front or on the other side. They yeah. could fit in that space. We'll satisfy your uh, engineer and planners. On that. Okay. Um, yes, sir. On the missionary wall. Bob wire? No barbed wire. No barbed wire. No. no. Can jump right over. We don't permit barbed wire. You can't have barbed wire. It's a six foot high solid block wall. Right. So and it's inside it a fence. The gate will be, will be chain length. That's slats. it. The gates in the front are right. usually because okay. what happens is they open the gates. Either the dumpster rolls out mm -hmm. or the hauler has a front end loader, lifts it up, puts it back, closes okay. the gates, and then leaves. Frankly, it's relatively small. This is a 10 by 10. It's not a big waste generator being a towing business, but it will have the front gates and masonry enclosure around the other. Like, what about recycling? <laughs> what about recycling? Sure. Recycling fits in there, too. Fits in there, too? Sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> there's another waiver that's requested. Uh, technically, parking is not permitted in a buffer. All major site plans require a 50-foot perimeter buffer. In this case, Mr. Higgins will address it. The site is very squeezed uh, with the depth that's allowed. So we have proposed parking in the Oakland Road frontage. This is a dead end portion of the road. And along the southerly property line, parking is 32 feet away. And that's outside the water quality basin. I don't see any detriment to the intent of the ordinance by that. And we're asking for relief in that regard. Loading spaces, one of the comments in the uh, report there's no loading from it in the front yard. There's an apron near one of the overhead doors in the front of the building. There's an apron, but there's not any loading intended there. That's only for <coughs> the exit or in case of an emergency tow job. When the guy wants to leave the building and get out the Oakland Road, that front door is provided. Otherwise, all loading and unloading occurs in the rear areas of the site. Okay. <coughs> uh, Section 188-225G is a new design standard that calls for private walkways to public sidewalks. Frankly, this is not a pedestrian used site. It's a towing yard. All access to it is typically by vehicle. That coupled with the fact that Oakland Road, Lakewood Farmingdale Road in this area is very rural. There are no sidewalks in the area, so there are no need for sidewalks in this particular application. Um, one other uh, waiver is roof line offsets. I would refer you to uh, A16, which is the architectural rendering. The building is about 80 feet long. The front elevation show the elevation of the building. There is a higher area where the front mezzanine is. The first 32 feet is a 25 feet to the eaves, uh, three on 12 slopes to the roof approximately 30 feet to the peak. In the back, there's a drop down where it's not a mezzanine area, and that total height is about 24 feet. So there is a break to the roof line that we feel meets the intent of that ordinance provision that calls for roof lines to be offset. Jennifer? I don't have any issues with the roof line, but the facade I have some problems with. Okay. Because you need articulations yes. and things like that, and the next. length of the facade, yeah. The next uh, section, if you look at the rendering, there's a light portion of the facade. It calls for facades that are greater than 50 feet in length to be broken up. Uh, this facade is 80 feet because it's a 50 by 80 building. In the proximate center of each side, that's a different color on the rendering. We're proposing that that would be framed out in about three or four inches articulate out and be of a different color to give accent to the face side of the wall and also to break up the color of the side. I think you're going to need to do more with the building. Um, it's required articulations of three feet across 10% of the facade is what's required. And changing the color or the texture of that little strip is not going to cut it. You need to do more with the facade on those both of those sides. So in that area, we'll, we'll frame it out three feet or so? It has to be over 10% of the facade. So it has to be a width of at least eight feet and bumped out or bumped in three feet. We, could, we agree to we'll, uh, meet the standard and we'll agree to provide the architectural to your board professionals. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. 
Um, that basically concludes my testimony. I've been through the professionals' reports, and I'd like to just go through them very quickly. Okay. Michael, I have just have a couple of questions. Do sure. you have any problem consolidating the lots? No, no problem. Okay. Um, you know, your plan doesn't really show, but you do yeah. label it on the first thing. Uh, all the way at the back at lot six is a farm. Yes. You, I realize you're not disturbing that. You can create the farm buffer and create We are going to create a buffer. We do ask, because it's not disturbed, we ask for relief in having to monument that. We will create a legal description and file a buffer easement. But he'll, he'll do that, but he has not to delineate Not to delineate it. We will delineate the conservation area adjacent okay. to the proposed uh, I don't have a problem with it because it's, you know, it's very heavily wooded. It's heavily so. wooded back there. And if anybody's going to come in there, the farmer will come in there, not, not the applicant. Yeah, that's true. Mr. Howard? I just have a couple of quick questions. Uh, did you say that there would be no outside storage? No, it's just the parking of the vehicle, okay. but no outside storage. Uh, and the mezzanine, what's that to be used for? There are offices depicted on the architecturals. Okay. Yeah. Their offices are in support of the proposed towing business. So you're only proposing one tenant for the whole building? Yes. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Excuse me, Mike. Um, one, one item that you had missed, um, I mentioned about the foundation plantings. Uh, I was going to get to that in your report. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, let me do the team report. Okay. I'll answer your question, Sherry. We do agree to provide the foundation plantings as requested okay. in uh, Sherry's report. That was in, uh, where was that? Five. December 11th. <laughs> what number was that? Five. On page five. Item G. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, really how about the story. entire periphery of the building? Absolutely. We're, we're looking to do, uh, what do is maybe we could do planters in some of those sidewalk areas uh, in lieu of planting beds. Okay, we'll, we'll submit something to satisfy the board. Okay, it still would technically require the relief, right. but because it's not a, technically a quote-unquote foundation planting, but we have in the past allowed planters, um, you know, with vegetation around perimeter of a building, which kind of meets the intent of the ordinance requirement. Okay. We'll put planters selectively around the building to be the intent okay. of that. Thank you. Um, on the engineering report, I think we've addressed everything. Uh, Jack had some questions that he asked. Uh, the condition of Oakland Road on the top, top of page four uh, is in good condition. There's a very small portion of it that's being used for access. The remainder is just frontage. That is in good condition. It's currently used for parking. You see the pictures to speak for themselves. How is that plowed, Mr. Geller? Who, who plows that? I'm not sure who plows that now. It's a township street. That owner might plow that. But the owner of this application will plow his frontage and out to Oakland Road, obviously. Okay, just don't block the neighbor. We would never do that. Okay, just... Um, number six on page four, there are no uh, site identification signs proposed for this application. No signs. Uh, seven, what provisions are proposed for storage of the site? We talked about that. It's in the refuse enclosure area. Uh, we talked about number eight, particulars of the towing business we described. Number nine, the applicant should discuss why 59 spaces are behind the building, are separated from the rest by fencing. That's because that's the compound area. We have agreed that would be concrete. Uh, how long vehicles remain on site, I think I addressed that already. And uh, the differences in the architectural, the 800 on the ground floor is not office that's customer weighted. Um, and number 12, the DEP LOI was renewed in 2011. It will need to be renewed again. We are asking for relief on that. Uh, we've been there twice already, and it was the same both times. And I pointed out that the wetlands is about 150 feet away from the 300-foot buffer. Okay. So I would ask for the board's uh, re request that you would grant, grant relief. The, the largest buffer that would be imposed on them is 150 feet. So if they're... 400 something feet from the wetlands and the development, you know, they're constrained by the stream, the riparian buffer as it is. So I would take no exception because 
it's so far within that constrained area that nothing is even remotely close to it. Okay. Yeah, because they, you know, they're, they're 300 feet from proposed to the center line of the riparian yeah, buffer. buffer. Right, and, so, and the wetlands, the maximum buffer that the DEP would impose is 150 feet. feet. So, so they're, they're roughly 150 area. feet Correct. to the parking lot. Okay. We're covered. Yeah. Anybody from the that. board have any? Mr. Amata, you have a problem with that? No. Okay. Uh, see the environmental report. The impact has addressed all the items. <clears throat> Stormwater management report. The applicant has addressed all necessary items. Uh, plat details, we agree to all the plat details that Mr. Mallon has cited. Uh, some of them are administrative in nature, and uh, we intend to do that. The only thing is number five on page five, which calls for a post and rail fence. We are eliminating that in favor of a berm, uh, landscaping, and a chain link fence along the edge of the, north of the edge of the parking. Everything else we agreed to do. On the CME report, I think Michael, before you, before you, Michael, before you go on, um, and one more. The um, I thought in our conversation you spoke that you had something from the power company. We do. Okay, that's. We have a letter dated November fifth, two thousand fifteen, from JCPNL that allows the use of their easement for the water quality basin as proposed. I can give you a copy of that or provide it as a condition. That would be a condition, please. Furthermore, uh, the Shade Tree Commission wanted to see, uh, we have willows proposed there. The Shade Tree Commission made a comment about oaks there. The JCPNL will not permit the planting of oaks. They just grow too tall. They don't like to see them. The willows can be kept shorter. Mm. And we're asking that they be I'm going to ask Sherry to be involved with that. Um. It does, did JCPNL approve the, the willows? Because, I mean, they still get usually taller than the They didn't have height. an objection. They, they didn't have an objection. plan, so they approved that. Okay. We can it, look at I mean, if, species if you, you typically, JCPNL uh, wants ornamentals. You know, willows get even larger than that. I mean, I don't have a problem with willows as long as JCPNL doesn't and won't chop them, you know, because they'll just come through and cut the tops off of them all. Yeah. Um, we can give you an alternate for the willows. Okay. Yeah, what maybe. about uh, what about pin oaks? No, no, that would be way too tall. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The pin oak. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because this would be the under JC the JCPNL easement. Yeah. Okay. JCPNL has a problem with the height. Yeah. Of okay. Yeah. Right. They're just going to come and cut something them. like various cherry trees, like cross yes. on cherries, that some, type of thing. Some low growth. We can go over the list. There's a long list, and it doesn't have to be a flowering tree. It could be a, something a little bit bigger than that, but they have a, an approved list. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. Um, and the CME report dated December 11th on page 6 has uh, prepared to discuss certain items. Uh, A are the variances which will be addressed. We've described in B the towing operation. Uh, we indicated that there are no repairs or body work proposed at this location. We will provide D the turning uh, radius template that shows that a single unit vehicle can get around this site without any problem. Um, I think we addressed all of the other comments. G, what about G, whether uh, any sales of vehicles will be conducted on site? There are no sales of vehicles of, from the site. The lots will be consolidated. We will provide the bollard protection. Um, I'm not sure about the mandatory development fees, how that applies to the site. It's going to be 2.5% of your equalized assessed value. Okay. However, it applies, that's what we're subject mm -hmm. to. Um, and we don't need to see the need for any improvements of Oakland Road, and we agreed to all their technical comments. There are a few outside agency. The Fire Bureau rendered a review on October 25th, 2017. Two comments. Fire lanes need to be designed for their requirements. I believe they are, and we agreed to that, and we will provide Knox, Knox Lock boxes on the gates for their access as needed. I addressed the Shade Tree Commission report of November 15th. The only objection we had is what replacing the oaks. We agreed that we would replace the willows with something to the certified tree expert satisfaction. On the Environmental Commission report, uh, they talked about the letter of interpretation, which we already discussed. They asked for documentation of how much time was spent on site for the development of the environmental impact report. We've been involved with this property for almost 13 years. 
and we've been on the site on many occasions, and that led into the environmental impact report, and we obviously will adhere to the Monmouth County Health Department and the state septic code for the septic system, and the farmer's advisory had no comment. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Gellar, um, Back, you have a white square there. Is, is that what the trash is going to be? That's trash. Trash, okay. And you had mentioned you show where the septic tank area is, and you say that there is an existing well, but I don't see where it is. It's not existing, it's proposed. It's in that it's an island. second island in the back. It's proposed. How far away is that from the well? It's over one. Oh, the well is more than 100 feet from the septic system by code, it has to be. Uh, yeah, that's what I wanted. Yes. On the plans, you have three bathrooms. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I believe there's one restroom downstairs and two upstairs, yes. Okay. And like you said, there's no sales, no repairs. That's correct. The waste oil recovery process you have. And I wanted to ask you, is this an insurance recovery place? Like, I mean, you're bringing out I mean, cars that are in accidents or breakdowns or whatever. Is this, you know, you say most of them leave within three days. What is the tow trucks coming tow? They can be towed to a body shop. Uh, the, sometimes they may stay longer if there's a, a important insurance inspection that needs to be made. But if it's not for long-term storage, if that's what you're asking. I wasn't clear on your question. Any outside storage you said there was uh, no. Just because. No. And, but, but you could have. Uh, oh, and the other thing was Jack had said that the entire lot should be concrete, not just the rear, six inches. Yeah. Just the rear, behind the fence. Just behind the fence. From the fence, the fence where the cars will be stored. There'll never be any cars parked in the front that are towed in? No, those are for parking of people that drive Is in. Is it employees parking? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, that's all I have to do. Well, one second. On that, could you show me exactly where the cemented area is going to be? You can right probably see it better on there, John. Right here. The fenced in, from the fenced in yard to the east. Okay. John, you can probably see it better okay. on, on John, the, uh, look over up there. See that black line right That's there? That's the fence line? Everything behind that. Okay. Everything behind to the right of that is going to be concrete. Right, good. Um, <coughs> I you? believe I <coughs> Did you say you were going to store... I'm not. Matt is. Oh. <laughs> you said you were going to store long-term <coughs> accident vehicles in that area where you're circling right now? Yes. About 12 vehicles, you said? Oh, 12, yes. Okay. Well, I, actually, I don't think it's long term. I think that'll be the police Sometimes impound. That'll be an impound the, area. The whole thing would be the impound. No, no. the police impound has to be separate from the, the main storage areas. Okay, so when he, so he's only going to be towing five vehicles a day. If I Roughly. 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 Roughly five Roughly. a day. And you only got spaces for the police impound 12? Well, so within three days, you'll be over, you'll be Not all your... vehicles need to go to the police impound. Depends on the nature of the accident and the particulars. Yeah. Uh, general <laughs> cars that are towed may be in the uh, general parking area outside that long-term impoundment area. Police impound, it, out of those five vehicles, you know, it, maybe one of those vehicles would be a police impound vehicle. Okay. So you that's know, only going to be... You're, on an you're occasion. Talking five, you're talking about... A variety of subjects. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Mr. Geller, the um, lot 25, that, that existing building, what is that again? Uh, that's a mixed use. It's a residence for the adjacent owner. He also operated a wood cutting uh, and sales business out of there in the past, and it had been also a roofing business, but it's a mixed use. And the owner of the towing lives there? No, no. It's okay. separate. That's outside. Separate. Yeah. Okay. That's a different yeah. owner. Okay. He's the person that's parking in most of the stuff in Oakland Road that you see yeah. in the pictures. Okay. Thank you. In the pictures? Yeah. All this stuff. That's Mr. Been. Chairman? Yes. Yes, yes Mr. Mr. Mallon. Um, Michael, and maybe the, maybe the applicant has seen this. What type of vehicles are you going to tow? Are you going to be towing trucks and buses here, or is it mainly all cars? It's mostly cars. Cars? So because cars, vans, you know, if you have larger vehicles, you have trouble maneuver. parking them there. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and access. It's not, it's not that type of facility. Okay. But on occasion, 
if it is a police impound on occasion, you might have a tr truck, you know, a big truck there, a tractor, on an occasion. It depends. I'm not sure he's able to do that. Not, I'm not, okay. You have to come up so that well, you can Yeah, why, why don't you bring him up, Mr. Cohen? Why don't I just swear the gentleman? Yeah, please. What made your right answer? <laughs> I affirm. Uh, would you I identify your name as fellow for the record and also identify your relationship to the applicant? My name is Chaim Goodman, C H A Y I M G O O D M A N, and I am the owner of All the Way Towing. Okay. Are you the owner of the property? No, he's a Purchase. contract purchaser of. Oh, so after property. the contract, you will own it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, and occupy. Right. What what is the scale uh, as far as size wise? Are you, you going to have made you know a large truck towing? Are you going to have those capabilities, or is it just flatbed, roll off, you know that type of towing? So record. Right. So so before I answer your question, I, I will just I'll give you a little background as far as uh, how township. Um, towing is divided. They have basically two categories. One is uh, standard, another one is called heavy. Okay. Um, heavies are where you see these uh, big, huge tow trucks that uh, tow tractor trailers and such such. Um, we're, we're not, we have not applied for that yet. We're not equipped yet to do um, that category. So we're not in the in the heavy. So we're not towing in any tractor trailers. Right. So we're just going to be dealing with cars and, uh, alike. You know, sometimes it may be like a little box truck or something like a van type of type of type of vehicle or, you know. Uh, my my question to you: Do you anticipate getting into the heavy towing? I don't, uh, nothing, nothing as of yet. If, if something like that uh, arises, we will uh, apply and reapply, whatever, you know. Mr. Cohen, your applicant does understand that if he goes to the heavy towing, he would be required to come back to the board, correct? If the board makes that a condition of his approval, yeah. Yeah, he, he would because the circulation is going to be affected at that point. <coughs> okay. Understood, yeah. Mr. Chairman, I have one more question. You yes, sir. Um, do you have? Uh, do we want to limit the applicant to only parking cars in the designated spots so they're not all over the place? Yeah. Well, it, as far as designated spots, oh, you got you got designated parking here, so that's where your cars would be parked. Oh, Don't yeah, see it, within the line. The I think that's right, what, that's right, what that's correct. Uh, Mr. Cohen, do you have a problem with that? No. Okay. okay. Any other questions from the board? Um, how many towing trucks do you have that would be on this site? I currently have three. Three. And what, again, what were the hours that they would be in operation? We're a 24-hour operation. Okay. However, it's not uh, active 24 hours necessarily. We, it's mostly 24 hours when that week that we are on the tow. Uh, uh, the, the Howell Township has a rotation. Okay. So it's not all month long. It's not all year long. You know, it's it's one week of a month where we have we're on tow, and that means we can uh, run out two o'clock in the morning if it happens. But um, the most of the operation is going to be during regular business hours. Okay. Yes, sir. Do you do tows for other right. municipalities? No. Just Howell. Just Howell, correct. <laughs> Or triple A, correct? You would do you do triple A tows for breakdowns and. We, yeah, I mean, we do other. Yeah, we do private, private towing as well. Yeah, if that's what you're asking, but not we're not contracted with any other municipality. Okay. This is going to be a towing business forever. As long as God willing. Yeah. Right. Just myself. Right. So you anticipate most of the people coming to the site, to like the waiting area, will be insurance adjusters or uh, clients picking up their vehicles. Correct. Okay. But then some of the tow trucks that you have here will be 
actually taking these cars maybe to a mechanic instead of bringing them back here. It's not always coming back to your place, right? No, not every tow we get comes to our. Okay, it uh, does come facility. back. Okay. Right, right. Okay. Any other questions? I have one question. If somebody abandons a car, I assume that happens a lot, uh, and they don't say anything to you, how long do you keep it? Okay, that, that's a very good question. Um, now, the, when, uh, uh, regarding abandonment, there's two different types of abandonments. One, one is abandonment of private property. The other one would be by the police department. In other words, if a police, if somebody abandons a vehicle on a highway, says, so, sort of to say, and a, and, a, and a cop rolls up on it and he says, uh, okay, we got to get this off the road, it's abandoned. Um, we would pull it in and, uh, and then the, it, it's, it's really up to the police department. Um, to, uh, they're going to do their legwork and to uh, contact the owner and get to uh, have them pick up the car. So it, it's how long does the car sit by us? It's uh, usually if somebody wants the car, he's going to, it's a matter of a few days. Right. Lately, I can tell you how has been pretty good with it. And, um, if, if we don't have response, um, they get us a title and then we bring, send it to Blewitz or something like that. Okay. <coughs> when you send it to Blewitz, you don't sell it. You said you do not sell on that property. So, but if somebody leaves their vehicle there and you have to get rid of it, <coughs> well, it's it not being sold, sold or advertised for sale on the property. No one's coming to the property to buy the vehicle. He's taking it to Blewitz and Blewitz is probably going to compensate him for Right. He's taking it to so like no retail sale. Correct. There's no, no retail. retail. No. no retail there. No retail sales. No retail repairs. No, no. no it, it's definitely not on the property. If I take it to Blue, it's he's buying it over there. <laughs> I just wanted to verify that. No problem. Okay. okay. Any other questions from the board? I have yes, a quick question. For example, uh, it's only Howell. But what happens? You have your connection. You know, people in different towns and the other. Town Jackson says, "Can you do me a favor? I have an emergency. Can you hold some cars in your property? Can you do that?" Yeah. That was, if you're asking another township, or you're asking private. Uh, for example, um, some of your friends or competition, they said, "I need help." Can you hold some cars in your property? Well, the answer is, if you're asking me, will I use my property to store for other people? No, I'm not. I'm not in the storing business. I, I'm running a tow, a tow yard. I need my space for my customers. Okay. I'm not going into a storage business. You know. You don't help at other townships. Just how? You don't uh, license okay. Right. Right. Okay. Any other questions? You're operating presently in Lakewood, right? Correct. And do you do towing for them at all? No, I don't tow for the local police. Oh, okay. okay um, I, I see we're getting to 1025. Mr. Cohen, about yes, how much more time testimony? As fast as Mr. Higgins can put his testimony on the record, then we're done. I can be very brief. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, board, you, you want to finish this up? Okay. Yeah. Professionals, is that okay? We just get this finished up? Okay. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Higgins, could you please uh, identify, um, you already did that, put your pro uh, professional and educational qualifications on the record as a planner? Yeah, I'm a licensed professional planner in the state. I've been licensed for approximately 40 years. I've testified before this board on numerous occasions as an expert in the field of planning. I've been accepted by this board as an expert in the field I of planning. I accept your qualifications you, and I've yeah. known you for at least 18 of those yes, years. Yes, so. yes, it's been yes. quite a while. Mr. Higgins, would you please address the use variance requested by the applicant this evening as well as the um, bulk variance you asked for? Yes, I will. Mr. Geller explained at the site what was being proposed, what the surrounding areas of the site are, so I won't go over that again. Uh, the site zone ARE 6, three uses or principal, principal permitted uses in the site, agriculture and horticulture, single family residences and essential services. The towing operation is not permitted in the zone, so use variance is necessary. It's also not permitted in any zone in, in the township, although it is a necessary service, which hopefully none of us on the way home tonight are going to have to utilize. Uh, the master plan designates the site for ARE 6, but it, 
doesn't really recognize the existence of the fact that Oak Glen Road has been cut off and is now a dead end street, uh, and nor does the zoning office, zoning zoning ordinance recognize that that aspect to it. And it doesn't recognize the fact that it's encumbered by power lines on one side, <laughs> that it's basically an isolated site with a residence and business on one side and basically open land, the power lands, power lines on the other side and no real residential uses surrounding it. And, and because of the conditions of the site, it doesn't recognize that this site is not really appropriate for single family residences. The area of the site that's available for development is too small for agricultural uses, so that's two uses in the zone that's really not appropriate for. And essential services are uses that have to have a specific need. They're usually public uses that have to have a specific need in that area on that site for that use, and neither your master plan nor your zoning ordinance recognize that on this site, that there's any need for that, and quite frankly, there is no need that I am aware of for essential services on this site. So the site's clearly not appropriate for, <clears throat> for the zoned uses of the site. I think the site's particularly suited for the proposed use. You can see that the layout of the site is, is well designed. It fits, fits very well into the developable <coughs> portion of the site. You have access to 195. You have access to Route 9. And on county, via County Line Road, you have also have access to County Line Road. So there's access to major streets that are convenient to this site. So it's ideal for a towing operation that would serve not only HAL, but serve surrounding areas with its private work. So, and the developed portion of the site is more than large enough to accommodate the use. Uh, so in my opinion, the general welfare is advanced due to the particular suitability of this site, which I said is an essential service that's an essential commercial service that's necessary for the public, provides a significant convenience to the public. So the general welfare is advanced. Um, with regard to any, any adverse impact on surrounding properties, I don't think there is any substantial adverse impact on surrounding properties. The adequate 50-foot buffer is provided adjacent to the mixed residential commercial use to the north. The access to the site, uh, Trucks would come off of Oak Glen Road and go right into the site. They would not pass that, that mixed residential use and wouldn't pass any other residential uses um, on Oak Glen Road. So I don't think there's any substantial negative impact to any surrounding uses on the site. And as regard to the master plan, your master plan is a general policy statement. <clears throat> and it wouldn't look at an individual isolated site li like this and try and designate it for a separate use from the surrounding area, which much of the surrounding area is well suited for the ARE6 zoning. Just this site is, is so unique that it really isn't well suited, but it doesn't make sense for a master plan, which is a broad brush document, to designate it for a separate use or a separate zone, because the site is so small and the developable por portion of the site is small. With regard to the bulk variances, there are three bulk variances necessary. A uh, minimum front yard setback, 100 feet is required, and 82.12 feet is proposed. And primarily that's due to two things. The fact that you have the environmental encumbrances on the site that force all of the development up to the front of the site. And also you have a very unusual front lot line that takes an angle. It goes about 70 feet to the south from the northern property line and then angles away from Oak Glen Road. If that didn't angle away from Oak Glen Road, you would have that 100-foot setback to the building. So there's two, two aspects there, I think, that, there, that are hardship aspects of this site that justify the granting of that variance. And you can't see, you can't tell that that building is not set back 100 feet. Again, it's similar to your prior application. Tonight, you have a, a line on a piece of paper, but you can't see it. In reality, you don't know where that line is when you're looking at the site. So it meets the intent of your ordinances in terms of its setback from the street. Uh, the maximum lock, percent lock coverage, 5% is permitted, 6.9% is proposed. And again, the 5% is geared towards single-family residential development in the ARE6 zone. It's not geared towards a commercial-type development. The, the difference in the 5% and the 6.9%, I don't think anybody could tell by looking at the site or looking at the property. And it's appropriate for this type of use. I think it's really subsumed within the variance. Uh, generally, the courts have looked at variances such as this as being subsumed within the use variance because the nature of the use, the nature of development is much different than the nature of what's permitted in the zone. 
The other issue is the perimeter buffer. A 50-foot buffer is required. Uh, you have the 50-foot buffer on the north side. On the west side, adjacent to Oak Glen Road, it starts off with a buffer that looks to be about 40 feet and maybe 50 feet actually to the road itself. And then because of the fact that the property line angles inward, uh, that buffer gets reduced. But the reality is the visual impact is going to be that you, it looks like it's a 50-foot buffer there. So I don't see any substantial negative impact to, to that. I think it's created primarily by, again, the fact that all the development on the site is pushed towards the west side of the site, and then you have that angled front lot line that exacerbates that situation. On the uh, south side of the property adjacent to the power lines, again, you don't have the 50-foot buffer, but you do have the power lines, which provide a substantial buffer between the site and the adjacent residentially zoned properties beyond the power lines. So again, it's, I think it's an issue of the, the site forcing all the development up towards the, the, the front of the site because of the environmental impacts of the site and the fact that you don't have any substantial negative impact because you do have a very wide area of the power lines. And quite frankly, the, the power lines have much greater impact on the properties to the south than this development will. So when I look at that, I think those variances can be granted. I think the use variance can be granted without substantial detriment to the general welfare and without substantially impairing your ordinance. Thank you. Any questions of Mr. Higgins? Jennifer? Mr. Chair, I, I don't disagree with the testimony that's been provided. I think that this location provides significant challenges for it to be developed per our zoning ordinance. Um, the mixed use to the north as well as the power lines, you know, coupled with the realignment of Oakland Road kind of cut this section out of what I would consider to the south and to the east, which is primarily residential. This is kind of a unique circumstance. So I do agree with the testimony. I also concur with the testimony regarding the bulk relief. Although the site is just shy of 15 acres, it is substantially encumbered with environmental constraints and the developable portion is kind of crunched up in the front and there is um, you know a non radial lot line it's not a rectangular lot um, so I take no exception to the testimony that's been granted in fact I agree with Mr. Higgins testimony okay Mr. Mallon okay Matt uh, I'm comfortable with everything. I think we've got good testimony on the operation of the site that'll help me with enforcement in the future. So I have no issues. Okay. Board members, do y'all have any questions, Mr. Higgins? I just like it to be put in the uh, notice that this, the back of this lot will never be developed. Okay. Yeah. Mr. I mean, it's physically impossible based on its environmental well, restrictions, but it's right. put it in there. No problem. Okay. As a we condition. Agree. Okay. Any other questions of the board? Any other questions of the board? Is Can I have? Would like to ask a question uh, of the engineer? No. Mr. Geller, you mentioned filters and the basins. How many basins are there going to be in the storm uh, storm sewer? Four catch basins on basically on the corners of the parking lot. And they're all going to have a filter. Yes. And what is that filter? What is, what are you, it's uh, an like insert a that fits into the inlet. It's a fabric, and there's a detail on the plan, and it's really only intended to capture particulates and debris that falls in. The real filtering occurs in the water quality swale, where. So it's, you're going to counter the gray swale. Yes, that coupled with the inserts, we need to. Uh, best management practices of the state. Jack, you right that, Jack? Yeah, complies with the regulations. It's about all I can enforce. Okay. How often but, does that filter get changed? Well, he takes water quality. First, he hits it with the with the filters. Then he runs it into the water quality, you want to call it trench, swale, whatever. Right. And then it goes into the recharge. So he's got two methods of water quality before he actually gets into the groundwater recharge. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Okay, can I have a motion to open the public? Motion to open to the public. I'll second. Motion by Mr. O'Donnell, seconded by Mr. Armada. 
All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Seeing none. Anyone from the public wish to come forward and make a comment or ask a question? Seeing none, can I have a motion to close? Motion to close. Second. Motion closed by Mr. O'Donnell, seconded by Mr. Armada. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. What's the pleasure of the board? Motion on uh, case number BA 17-17. Um, I agree with Mr. Higgins and all our professionals, and I find this uh, business to be a positive criteria for how Township. And the applicant was uh, very willing to make the necessary changes that we wanted. So my motion is to approve this application. Okay. Have a motion to approve by Mr. O'Donnell. Can I have a second? I'll second it. Uh, all the requirements that we requested were uh, given to us or given to the um, paperwork and uh, I think it's we need a good place to have a, a storage facility for the pro, uh, wrecked cars and I bet you today you've got some customers. <laughs> <laughs> Might be me. <laughs> <laughs> we got a second by Mr. Armada. Can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Armada. Yes. Mr. Mertens. Um, I agree. I think the applicant has toned down this application. Normally, I'm not a big fan of putting a towing business in a residential area, but I agree with the planner, um, the testimony. It is, this site is really, I think, uh, appropriate for it, and it does benefit, I think, the residents of the township. So I will vote yes, too. Thank you. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Posh? Yes. Mr. St. Clemente? Yes, and uh, just to point out some uh, important things, one would be the concrete of the area where the, the cars will be stored. Uh, that the applicant will meet the facade standard and the applicant will be a standard towing. But yes. Thank you. Mr. Orozco? Yes. And Chairman Nansen? I agree with my fellow board members. I think this is a good fit here now. You know, before I really had a problem with it because we, we, we didn't know what else was coming. And I, I think you put forth a great application for this site. You agreed to the concrete, the environmental constraints. It, it just, it, it fits now. So my vote is yes. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you very much for your time. I want, to, I want to thank my professionals. I know it's treacherous out there. Hopefully not. But, you know, I thank you all for staying. I wanted to get this done. Can we get a towing <laughs> and I appreciate, I appreciate the board members for staying and getting this Excuse done. Do I have a motion? No. Oh, Mr. Uh, Trumpley's invoices. We got invoices. Do I have a motion to approve Mr. Trumpley? Motion by Mr. Amata, seconded by Mr. O'Donnell. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Martins. Second? Second by Mr. O'Donnell. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Zoning board adjustments adjourns at 1040. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I, I'm sorry, but thank you. He's going to break down.